At Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast, Shores of Panama. Radiant, elegant, and spectacular. Steps away from white sugar sand, every room overlooks the turquoise of the Gulf of Mexico. Come in for your tour today. Life's a Beach Realty is your gateway to Shores of Panama, the shores, and a whole lot more. Baltimore. You're now in the Sports Web, a sports talk show for the hardcore fan. Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense. Welcome back to another edition of the Evolution of Sports Talk Television live here from Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy and also Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors, your pre-pre-show edition. Want to go out to the scoreboard here really quick. Alex, give us some updates on some of these games right now. Kansas City just got a turnover against Detroit, but the score is still 0-10. to T.J. Hawkinson with the touchdown. So Detroit's over uh, Kansas City right now, 10 to nothing. Currently. Wow. Washington is losing to the New York Giants, 0-14. to Wayne Gallman with both of the touchdowns there. The Chargers are tied up with the Miami Tanks. I'm sorry, the Miami Dolphins, 10-10. Yeah. to Wow. Uh, Parker from Miami, 34-yard touchdown reception. Patriots are still up against the Bills, 13 to nothing. Browns, Baltimore, tied up at 7-7. Ricky Seals-Jones for the Cleveland Browns, 7. Miles Boykin for the Baltimore Ravens, just tied it up, 7-7. Uh, the Raiders are pulling a number against the Indianapolis Colts, 21-7. Wow, that's Alex. a surprise. That's what about uh, Vontae's perfect, though? Did we see that play, right? That was perfect on that hit, right? Well, go ahead and tell us what happened there, Tampa Bay. Ready? We saw him get ejected for the helmet-to-helmet -helmet on the helmet. helmet oh, there. yes. Uh, non incidental very much blatant. Gentleman had his knee on the ground, and he came in spear-like, helmet-to-helmet contact. He right. deserved that ejection. And, and, you know, unlike Vontes, we've seen him go head in and just spear guys. But he did let up on that. He's almost going in to touch him, but he's always leading with that dang head of his. And all it takes is that helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, no matter how hard it is or no matter how, how solid the hit is. And, he, and especially being perfect, he's going to get ejected every time. And if you don't know what you're watching right now, this is the evolution of Sports Talk Television live nightly here on Bucks Report. It's the Sports Web live here with all this, all these football fans. And you don't necessarily have to be a Bucks fan. You can be a Raider fan. You can be a Colt fan. You can be a Chief fan. You can be a Ram fan. You can be a Patriots fan. It doesn't matter. It, this seems like the church or the house of football on Sunday afternoons, 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether we're going to watch the Tampa Bay Rays, a big week for them. I know you want to talk about them, Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy. The Tampa Bay Lightning only a week away from that start of the season. Or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a big-time game today versus the L.A. Rams. I would say it's a must-win game. And, and that's real that's real audience participation in the background. Oh, so, yeah. uh, you know, if you're at home, the Bucks are on the road. You want to join the evolution of Sports Talk Television, definitely get out here. It's to kind Burns. of what we had thought all it's that, This yeah. is what we had in mind all along. All along. We were saying even Perfect earlier today. Perfect shot, Ray Kennedy. Well, from our AAF days with the Orlando Apollos out here. Come a long way. The world champion Orlando Apollos. Yes. So, you know, we, we thought we talked about having these watch parties out here. And, of course, just the natural progression of people down here. We got 25 televisions within, like, within a stone's distance. Games going crazy everywhere. I mean, you can see them in the background. Yeah. I love the 
this. If you don't love this, if you don't love football, you have no pulse, right, Alex Fleming? Oh uh, man, this is what we live and breathe for. Yeah. The first day, the first Sunday of the NFL season should be a national holiday. Oh, well, now and Super Bowl Sunday too. And Super Bowl at Sunday. The beginning and at the end of the season, I'd take that. Absolutely. Tip your servers, tip your waitress. Um, going back to your original point on Vontez Perfect, I blame him for what's happening to Antonio Brown. He's never been the same since that hit. Pittsburgh, Cincinnati in that playoff game. Wow. And we're talking and that about that hit, hit with Tampa, uh, wow. Ray Kennedy, with Vontez Burbick. And I, I tell you what, I definitely want to talk to some fans today. I definitely want to give them the opportunity. But, of course, we'll have Leo Haggerty. We'll be getting you ready for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the L.A. Rams. Disappointing loss last week versus the Giants. A game most likely you should have had. The defense of the Bucks blew that lead 28 to 10. Matt Bryant, of course, misses the field goal. Lots of controversy this week with the secret ad and Kerry Lloyd. And at this point, the Bucks they have to go out there and play. And they have to go and play a team in the LA Rams that are three and zero that have a lot of offensive weapons, a lot more than what the Giants had last week, Alex. That was pretty low with the secret ad. Having Kerry Lloyd saying you worried about 34-yard field goals? Well, Carly Lloyd isn't. That's just wrong. If you're going to support your team, support your team. Yeah. I understand he was responsible for five points, four technically if you count the blocked extra point. Right. But with that being said, we're out west now. Yeah. Take one game and move on. You can't linger on something like that. And now we're facing the Hydra, a three-headed monster in Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, and Brandon Cooks. Not to mention Todd Gurley and Malcolm Brown because it's going to be the Malcolm Brown show later on in the year. Tampa Bay needs to be on the offensive. We need to take this game seriously and score points. Field goals are not going to cut it. And we always go to you with history of this matchup, and there is a steep history not necessarily favoring the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 1979 NFC Championship game versus the Rams. Nine to nothing. 1999, 11 to six in right. the NFC Championship game and, against St. Louis. And the Bucs are 0 4 in Los Angeles against these Rams, right? right. I'm not including those St. Louis years. Yeah. But we've yet to actually travel both before they moved to St. Louis and once since they've been back. We haven't played them in Los Angeles since they've come back. So we're 0-4, and, and that's that was basically I wrote a piece today in Bucks Report that it's time for us to get off that schneid, time for us to get that goose egg gone and get that first win in Los Angeles against these Rams. Because with a new stadium next year, them and the Chargers, they ain't going anywhere for a long time. It's time for us to start reversing some of this Buccaneer history and start getting more victories and losses. Yeah, let's uh, go out to the Bucks Report comment section because I want to definitely get the fans in on it today and also want to get some fans on the camera from live at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. They've been around since 1992. Great food, great service. We just had some great wings. I have boneless. We'll have some bone in later on. Let's read some comments. It's 10 to 3 Lions right now. That's kind of a surprise. Kansas City coming in here. Look like they're unstoppable, but the Lions seem like they're real at this point, Alex. Coming in at 2-0-1. Oh, A lot of people forget that the Lions could be 3-0 if not for Kyler Murray and that unbelievable uh, quarter of football and the Cardinals tying them up in that first game of the season. You remember week one? Yes. Week one was crazy. Yes. They had the Arizona Cardinals dead to rights. Kyler Murray and Larry Fitzgerald just basically said, we're not going out like that. And it ended in a 27-27 tie. Lo and behold, who would think in week four the Detroit Lions are leading the NFC North? It's amazing. And you have Green Bay the other night, you know, the same situation, Tampa Bay, Ray Kennedy. Philadelphia needs a win. They're going into a hostile environment, and they get it. And, oh, by the way, Aaron Rodgers throws an interception in the red zone. Nobody's saying the guy should be cut or he's a bust at this point. It happens in the NFL. The NFL means not for long, and it happened the other night with the Eagles and the Packers. And circling back to the NFC North, and that's one of our – we got like four 4 o'clock matchups today. One of them is that Minnesota-Chicago game. Yes. You know, I mean – Call, call it old school from when the Buccaneers played in the sure. NFC Norris division, sure. but I'm looking at that game. I still think the Bucks rams game is your best 4 o'clock game, but you also have what? You have the Jaguars playing against the Broncos. In yeah. Denver. Right, in Denver. And then you got uh, Denver's 0-3 with no sacks. How's that Imagine possible? That. That's right. crazy. I don't know. It's it's crazy when you get rid of a... Shaquille, we got Shaquille Barrett. That's why. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Vic Fangio was the defensive coordinator for Chicago Bears and that defense last year that looked so good. Yeah. Well, imagine a year later, Vic Fangio gets a coaching gig. He's in the Denver now. And we bring in another coach, Chuck Pagano, 
and the Chicago Bears defense hasn't missed the beat. Wow, yeah. No, in fact, in some respects, they've gotten I'm gonna stronger. Do, I'm going to do something here really quick. I'm going to get a fan in here. Yeah, come on. Get, get, we got, uh, you know this man right here. He's been on these broadcasts before. This is Mr. Raider James. And right now, you've got to be feeling good. Keep it clean. As the Raiders are winning 21 to 10, go ahead and speak in that microphone there, my friend. Well, what, do you, what have you seen so far? So far, Burfecht is out for a helmet to helmet. So uh, he's gone for he's gone for the game. So that's a big loss. We're still up 21 10. Let's kick some butt, come on Raiders. All right, there you go. So there's a Raider fan. There's Chiefs fans here. There's Falcon fans. You got Browns fans. I haven't in seen the house. one Rams fan, and I don't want to see any Rams. Fans. Right, and I've even Nothing seen some Bucks up. fans. A lot yeah. of people. There's more Bucks to, fans in right. Los Angeles right. the today. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. It's a long season. They're one and two. And we're getting you ready here on the Sports Web. It's your pre-pre show. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors, Tampa Bay, Ray Kennedy. As we go back to Bucks Report, get some more uh, comments. Tennessee, 17 to seven over the Atlanta Falcons. Once again, Falcons struggling with Matt Ryan. Dirk Carter, the offensive coordinator. I'm just saying. No running game. They're missing two offensive linemen. Lindstrom has gone on IR and McGrary. Their tackle from Washington, I believe, is not playing in this game. With that being said, when you can't run the football because Devontae Freeman hasn't showed up, it's kind of hard to throw the football. Well, it's because, look, Dirk Carter couldn't run the football with the Bucks. You know, it's it's it's... It is what it is at this point. He's not able to run the although football some, with the Bucks. Although that, some would make the argument that the Buccaneers are having offensive line troubles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but, you know, still. And yeah. then Keon O'Neal also, uh, the safety, is also out for the season, which is going to be a big hit for that Falcon defense. Go ahead, Tampa. No, I was just going to say that working it back to the hole with Dirk Cotter going to the Atlanta Rams, or Atlanta Rams, Atlanta Falcons, is that we were joking around tongue-in-cheek this entire year or the off season. That now that he's going back, you know Dan Quinn's going to run a good defensive, a good defensive-minded team there. Right. But with those injuries on the offensive line, obviously in Atlanta, unable to get that running game started, we're seeing, you know, Matt Ryan's got to be right now pulling a hair out of his head. Well, what little he has left. Yeah, I mean they've had a slow start. They're in danger right now of being at home and starting off one and three with a new offensive coordinator. So. We'll, we'll definitely monitor that situation with the NFC South and all, all could the teams eight, right now. Could 8-8 eight eight win the division this year? Who? The South. Do you got it could. I mean, look, you, you know, the injury to Drew Brees, you have the uncertainty with the Carolina Panthers. I mean, they get an unbelievable performance versus the Cardinals, but it's the Cardinals. Now you have the test today versus the Texans. And once again, we talked about the Falcons and their struggles. And then, oh, by the way, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, let's be fair. Carolina Panthers has this Swiss Army knife by the name of Christian McCaffrey, who just scored a touchdown, by the way, who's going to keep them in contention. Number two, the New Orleans Saints, they looked pretty good against Seattle last week, and that was without Drew Brees. Big test tonight versus the Dallas Cowboys. Prime time. Uh, right. And with Teddy Bridgewater, the Cowboys' impressive start. Uh, we'll go back to Johnny here. New England 13 to nothing over the Bills. You know, it's just the Patriots. It's, it's their way. You know, a team like the Bills, they feel good about themselves. They're 3-0, undefeated in the division, and they go against a juggernaut like the Patriots, and it doesn't matter as long as you have Belichick and Tom Brady, you have an opportunity to win almost every game. Best thing you could do if you're a Buffalo Bills fan is show up to the parking lot and watch the outdoor wrestling because you guys are going to be leaving early. New England <laughs> runs this division. All right, there you go. Oakland 21-10 to 10 over Carolina. Carolina 3-3, three to three, and you just said update that score now. It's 10-3. to three. Uh, Ben says, oh, if you don't have a team, then just get wasted with Ray and Peter today. Drunk shows are the best shows. Yeah, I, we don't really get drunk here on the sports web. It's you, We do three things, right? Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense on the evolution of Sports Talk Television. Join the 63,000 following we have here on Facebook, live here on Bucks Report, live from Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Let me Google ask you guys Hyde. something, yes. okay? New England has Josh Gordon last year. He gets suspended again for whatever, blowing smoke again. And then they bring in Antonio Brown for a cup of coffee this year. The one was that a cup of coffee? What was that? A cup of coffee and a Danish. A cup of vodka. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't coffee. He was drinking Molly. But my question to you guys is, we get to the professional level. Right. 53 guys on a team, 32 teams in the NFL. The best thing an organization and a coach can do for those 53 guys on the field is give them hope. Yeah. And even with Josh Gordon coming in and getting suspended being out the year, even with Antonio Brown rolling through, even if it's a miss for them, 
which half the time is really not a miss for New England. They usually hit with Randy Moss or with these different players. Even with the miss like Antonio Brown, you still see the New England Patriots come out with this confidence and this swagger. And that's what gets me for all the years we had Hugh Culverhouse as an owner. And he would get his $13 million TV revenue money back in you know March. He pocketed right. all he could. Then he would draft the Bo Jackson number one overall, knowing the son of a gun was never going to come here and play. Yeah. So for so many years, he literally tore our guy's confidence down, and we wouldn't let us get confidence. We started getting it through the 90s, and t- Tony Dungy, God bless him for bringing it the way he did. And now I still see it, even with the troubles we've had so far this year at one and two, I still see this team gaining the confidence that they need to succeed. Just don't know if the turnaround's complete yet. Well, they're improved. I mean, it's disappointing that they lose against the Giants, and that's a game you can't lose. And a lot of people say, well, they're doing the same things. They're blowing leads with their secondary. They're not making kicks. But look, at the end of the day, it's a long season. You definitely got to correct some things, and you got to do it quick versus the Rams because we talked about it. The plethora, Leo Ward, who will be here in just a little bit, probably about 3, 3.30 to do the pregame show. You have a plethora of weapons on the outside with the Woods, with the Cooks, and with the Cooper Cup. Funny thing about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is that it's missed opportunities. Now, if you want to say San Francisco beat us, that's fine. But if Jameis doesn't throw two interceptions, one on a hit route to Peyton Barber, and one because he was panicking because the pocket's not containing for him, okay, fine. Carolina, we won fair and square. But that came down to the last play, and they gave the ball to Christian McCaffrey because they didn't trust Cam Newton. Right. Last week, we saw a rookie quarterback throw for 336 yards and make a comeback, and they did it quickly after scoring off the first drive yep. in the second half. Yep. Missed opportunities. Right. If the offensive line can protect Jameis, if we can actually run the football. Rojo went to USC, so he should be comfortable. Yes. If we can run the football and protect Jameis, this is going to be a high-scoring affair. I didn't realize that, thinking about a homecoming game for Rojo. In, in a yeah, homecoming yes. game for Rojo, homecoming game for Todd McNair, who's the running back coach who also coached at USC. And I think that's where you have to attack the Rams at this point because the Rams early on in the year have not shown that they're able to stop running backs. Chubb nearly had 100 yards. McCaffrey went over 100 yards, of course, 158, I believe, the first week. Kamara didn't do anything, but that was because Drew Brees was out of the game. So that defense seemed susceptible to the running game, and I think that's where you make your money at this point. You take the pressure off of Jameis Winston because you don't want to get into uh, a matchup where Winston is going to throw 40 to 50 times a game. You want to have balance to the offense. That's the Lee Bredme. you got to have that balance in the offense, run pass differential to help him out. And that's the way you beat a McVay offense is with ball control offense of your own and keep them on the sidelines. Yeah, I like it. I want to say right now, I'm just glad, I'm thankful for today's game that it's not like that Thursday night game a few years ago, the ketchup and mustard game. Thank God it's not a color rush game. Oh, Was well, that not I'll tell the you worst what. color rush ever? I like the color rush uniform. But not the ketchup and mustard. That no, I, I hate the yellow. That I, was I horrible. That was a horrible viewing, but I like the red uniforms over what they have. I'm just saying. You know what looked good? You know what looked really good? When? Winking, a when? winking Bucko Bruce looked great when Hardy Nickerson came in here and started kicking some ass back in the 90s. So I'm going to say that the red looks good, but the red looks a lot better when we're winning, and that's what we need to get started Well, today. it comes down to this. You know, it doesn't matter what you wear. You can wear the worst uniforms in the NFL, but if you're winning games consistently, people start to buy in. The Patriots. Right. I agree and disagree. Today is going to be one of the first times ever that Minnesota is going to wear the home uniforms in Chicago, they will be wearing purple because Chicago is going to wear their old throwback uniforms really? from 1921 and 1922. That looks like the old McDonald's uniform. Yes. Oh, yeah. So look for the Chicago defense to fly. All right. Wow. Ben says there is uh, something other uh, than soda in uh, a Peter's Pepsi cup today. That's not true. There isn't. It's just Mountain Dew. This is all natural. And what you're watching right now is the evolution of sports talk television live here Nightly on Bucks Report, we're live from Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming, Fantasy and Flavors, one of our newest Bucks Report writers, and then, of course, Mr. Tampa Bay, Ray Kennedy, best of the Bay columnist. Respect. There you go, my Yo, friend. Speaking Congratulations, of yes, by the way. Thank you, Alex. Yes, yeah, let's go ahead. I'll tell you what. Yeah, there you go. We'll give you the clap. Golf, golf clap, 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 clap. Yikes. That was, I want to say again, thank you to the Creative <laughs> Loafing. Well, no, thank you to the staff at Creative Loafing. Um, thank you for all of our fans out there that voted for me this year. 
Of course, uh, I didn't know I was actually nominated in two categories till the final day, but the one I did know about, we ended up getting. And, yeah. and that's that's to every one of you all out there. That's all of ours because I just enjoy writing. I, like, I enjoy um, talking about the Bucks and the history of the Bucks. But if it wasn't for you all out there following me and having a good time with us and getting involved with the evolution of sports, then I wouldn't have had a chance. So thank you. And then, of course, Rep Matthew Cannon Fire Podcast, which he's also a part of the Bucks Report Podcast Network. Let's read some more comments. Chargers 10 to 10 with Miami. That's surprising. Melvin Gordon, of course, coming back. Are you surprised that he ended his holdout so soon? And why did he end his holdout so soon? Because a lot of people thought that this would go on for an extended period of time and then eventually he would get traded. Why all of a sudden the change of heart, Alex? Fifth year option on Melvin Gordon. He didn't have any leeway. He didn't have any leverage. Melvin Gordon is not Ezekiel Elliott. As you can see, they were fine. Without him, Austin Eckler was filling in the role. Justin Jackson was hurt, and Los Angeles was losing games. This team has Super Bowl ambitions. Imagine how good this Los Angeles Chargers team would be if they didn't lose Derwin James. Wow. He came back. He's going to try to get a contract. He's going to get the $5.6 million because they only charged him half of the fines instead of the regular portion. With Melvin Gordon, they have Super Bowl ambitions. Without Melvin Gordon, they're just a regular playoff team. All right, let's talk about Jalen Ramsey because much has been made about him possibly going to the Bucs in the trade or other teams like the Jets, like Seattle, possibly Philly or KC. And, you know, the difficulty that KC's kind of having today, maybe he adds to that defense. Do you expect Jalen Ramsey, who walked away from the team because the birth of his daughter, he has back problems, supposedly the flu, to me, this is all distractions at this point and a way for him to basically get out. Do you think the Jaguars eventually trade Ramsey away? Not this season. It's okay. all smoke and mirrors. Wow. They need Jalen Ramsey just as much as Jalen Ramsey needs Jacksonville. But does he want to be there? Does it seem like he wants to be there? Because I get it. You're going away. Uh, you're walking away because you want to be there for the birth of your daughter. But then at the end of the day, you say you have the flu, you have back problems. I mean, which, which is it now? This is all about perspective. Okay. I believe two weeks ago, James White of the New England Patriots had a, well, he didn't give birth, but his wife gave birth of a brand new baby. And no one said anything about it. Now, all of a sudden, Jalen Ramsey misses the beginning of practices and earlier this week. He flies out. He He's with his wife in Tennessee and has a brand new baby. Yet, for some odd reason, he flew out to Denver with the team to play against the Denver Broncos. But it's all about perspective. Jalen Ramsey is a shutdown corner who wants to get paid. He has outlived and outperformed his contract. This is what happens when you have a star player in an unhappy situation with a very difficult general manager who's not much on leeways and millennial ties. Yeah, I mean it's a good, it's a great oh, point. Great point. I know you're right. They both need each other. And Jalen, he's not gonna, he's not gonna roll it up like Antonio Brown or not Antonio Brown, but well, like Le'Veon he Bell. He's not gonna not play it because he right. knows that'll affect the bottom line. So he's going to – but, you know, at what point is Jacksonville, is there continuing to go on? If that defense stays as stout as they've looked at times this season and you start getting to be a playoff caliber team, if that ever started to cause some type of infrastructure issue yeah. or some type of crack within a team, which I don't think it is at this point, then that might be a different situation. But at this point, no, I think he's going to be there. All right, Ben says, any Bucks fans there, by the way? There is. There needs to be more. But there's a variety of fans here live at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. Whether we're going to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, who have had an extraordinary week. Boom. They clinched a playoff spot on Friday night. They lost on Saturday, so we'll see what happens. But, of course, it looks like they're going to face the Oakland Athletics in Oakland right. on Wednesday night. Really quick, I know – we oh. talk some baseball. Give me some thoughts here on the season. First of all, I was so happy. I felt bad a little bit, like minusculely. Right. I was so happy to see that Friday night, or was it Thursday night, yeah. Oakland, and a walk-off win by the Mariners <laughs> at Oakland. <laughs> it's, been amazing, it's been an amazing season all around the last two weeks. You really can't predict it. You couldn't right. predict that Cleveland would have the collapse that they have against the god-awful Chicago White Sox. But thank you very much, Chicago, for doing the job of getting rid of Cleveland because right. Cleveland's out. They're done. And Charlie Morton said himself that he's been in Pittsburgh three years in a row. Three years he was in Pittsburgh sure. where he saw they were hosting this wild card game or they had a big home game where so much was on the line and you had 30,000-plus Rockets fans showing up and then just, you know, ended up laying an egg. Yeah. So for us to, you know, we've been world beaters the entire season. 
We still have one of the, if not the lowest payroll in Major League Baseball. Let's go to Oakland. Let's let let's like let the new money ball beat the old money ball. Let's win that first game, and then like I guess what we probably go up against Houston is in uh yeah in the, uh, t- in the division series. All right, let's read some more comments. I I live in SoCal, but from Tampa, I love the Bucks. But the guy has his hand over his head, and, or the you know the hand of uh, you know the emoji <laughs> with the oh you know that, ah, that's what that's what happens. Right. Yes. Uh, let's see. Washington has a field goal. 14-3 to three now. Giants still on top with Daniel Jones, so it seems like he's the real deal. And you talked about it. Wayne Gallman, of course, the injury to Saquon Barkley. He's going to miss four to eight weeks, so Gallman stepping in and doing a pretty damn good job today, right? Not one but two touchdowns for Wayne Gallman, nice. the replacement. Now, before this year, Wayne Gallman was just a utility back. He had a couple of carries, maybe 200 yards for his entire career. But if you add a tight end, Sterling Shepard at wide receiver, a comparable and mobile quarterback, things can happen. And now all of a sudden, they're back in the NFC East mix. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that's crazy to think. You take out Eli Manning, but you have Daniel Jones. But look, that's the reason why you put in Jones in the first place. He gives you that spark for your team. And unfortunately, it came against the Bucks, but over 300 yards, which you said, I'll give you credit. There you go. There's your pat on the back, because I know you're going to do it anyway, but we'll do it <laughs> for you. But I tell you right now, getting back Shepard, having Evan Ingram, and then the mobility factor. You know, Eli Manning is like a Statue of Liberty. He takes so many shots with the offensive line. At least Jones can scale the pocket in and out and make things happen and make those plays for that Giants team. So right now, uh, fourteen to three is most games right now. We're at halftime. I was looking at a statistic: Lamar Jackson, your guy. Yes, six for eight. 34 yards, struggling right now versus the Cleveland Browns. And you even told me that the Browns are going to lose this game. You still feel confident? I'm very confident. Baltimore is at home. He's hitting Miles Boykin. He's not hitting his main receivers. Foot injury for Mark Andrews, but he decided to go. Give it time. Control Miles Garrett. If they don't get pressure on Lamar, he's going to tear this team apart. And I tell you right now, you talk about the Browns last week playing the L.A. Rams, and that defense seems for real because they held Todd Gurley to under 60 yards of rushing, really made it difficult for Jared Goff. He threw two interceptions in that game, so the Browns' defense definitely seems to be holding up the end of the bargain. Now the key is, can this young quarterback in Baker Mayfield in his second year do what he needs to do to get this team some wins? Well, with all due respect, Cleveland's defense has more number ones than the Beatles, right? (laughs) <laughs> That's a pretty good defense. That's a good one, Ray. Know, That's why we love you, Tampa Bay, Ray Kennedy. Working it back to the to the Giants and the success they're having. They got a. They've been building that offensive line for the last couple of years. So I mean, for to be able to have a Daniel Jones step in and have a. I mean, we were wondering last year. I mean, Eli was starting to get a little shaky in the pocket. He was starting to show his age. To see them having any success, even with Saquon on the bench, yeah. it's not a big shock to me. I expected this to happen. I just didn't want it to happen to us starting last week against the Bucks. And look who decided to come into the shot here. We got Mr. Blake oh Anthony. Get on that mic there, Mr. Blake Anthony of Blake and Blake Sports. Buck and Blake Sports here really quick as we're just shifting around because you are on the evolution of Sports Talk Television. Join the 63,000 following we have here on Facebook. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming. Of course, Mr. Blake Anthony. What's going on, buddy? You ready for this game today? Yeah, absolutely. I'm ready anytime to see football. Better talking to that mic oh, there. Oh, yeah. Sorry Talk about strong. that, sir. Come strong, man. Oh, sorry about we that, sir. We haven't been you know, co-hosting here in a long time. I know. You miss me? Yeah, of course, man. All right. So what do you see in this game versus the Rams and the Bucks? Well, it's the same as always. You're facing pretty good running backs three weeks in, well, four weeks in a row. Now uh, you're going to have to stop Ty Gurley. Easier said than done. But I don't think he's 100%, to be quite honest. But Ty Belly does offer a lot of uh, pass catching ability, which is something the Bucks are going to have to look out for. So look for getting him out in open space and trying to beat um, a linebacker or a defensive back one on one situation. But the key to their offense is truly Cooper Cup. Cooper yeah. Cup is their X factor. They're going to find all types of ways to get him the ball. And they like to run those trips and trips bunch and run those, uh, I like to call them pick routes to get people open and use the referee as another defender. And that's pretty much what their <laughs> offense is because they don't possess the type of receiver to throw jump balls that's just not their game i mean um what's the young kid's name from usc i slips my mind right now wide receiver that they have on the roster from usc receiver for uh, the rams for the rams well you have you, uh, you have Braden cooks 
You have Cooper Cup, and of course you got Robert Woods. And Woods. Josh Reynolds. Robert Woods. Yeah. Robert, Robert Woods. Woods. Yeah. Robert they Woods. got Robert Woods, who's came a long way. Didn't start off his career real hot, but, you know, usually receivers tend to um, peak out around their third year, and he's definitely shown he can play in this league. But, again, you don't really have that type of receiver on that offense to throw jump balls to and one-on-one situations. I'm sure he will if he has to, but that's not the kind of offense that they run. They're just going to try to get people open with the type of routes that they run. And then, of course, pound Todd Gurley in the meanwhile. He's been doing a great job the last couple of weeks here, almost, what, Monday and Thursdays, breaking down tape. So we'll have uh, definitely Blake Anthony in the house here live at Ferg's on Central Avenue, 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether we're going to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, home of the official watch parties, home and away, and the evolution of sports talk television, the sports web, join. 63,000 following we have here on Facebook. So let's go ahead and read some comments here. And then I think we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but we'll probably get out, talk some more about this matchup and talk with some more fans here because I want to get everybody's uh, responses. Uh, let's see. Uh, Bucks OL isn't better than the Falcons OL. Uh, Tennessee 24 to 7. Well, you want to talk about over that? Over Atlanta. I mean, right now, I mean, that to me, that's a surprise of the day along with the Raiders and the Colts. But right now, you talked about it, Dirk Cutter being the offensive coordinator, but that line is struggling. Matt Ryan is struggling. And I said at the beginning of the year, Dirk Cutter is not that great as an offensive coordinator. And the reason why is because he can't run the ball. He has no balance to that offense at all. And he doesn't make game time adjustments. He's going right. to run his offense the way he wants to run it, period. So Atlanta did draft two offensive linemen in the draft. I think they just lost another one in the game. And they've already lost, I think, the kid from Boston College for the season already. Lindstrom. With that being said, why are you still going to run five to seven step drops knowing your offensive line can't hold the ball that long? Same goes with us today, again, playing against Aaron Ron, um, Aaron Donald and um, uh, Clay Matthews and, and, and Fowler today. We got to – you got to get the ball <laughs> – you got to get the ball out quick. You got to try to use the back in open space. I said the way they rush on third and longs is real wide. So take that as an advantage. Winston's going to have to use his legs today because when they played Cleveland last week, they used another defensive back to spy Baker Mayfield, which, again, takes a guy out of coverage. So if you can do that and make them respect Winston scrambling, hopefully that can free up a wide receiver on yeah. some routes and stuff like that because if they're going to do exactly what Chicago Bears did to us last year when we had um, Fitzpatrick at the helm. They're going to rush four and set everybody at the sticks and force you to either throw underneath and not going to throw any balls deep. And what you're watching right yeah. now and listening to here live at Ferg's 1320 Central mm -hmm. Avenue in mm -hmm. St. Pete. Make some noise, football fans. We're live here on the sports web. Join the 63,000 following we have here on Facebook. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors. Of course, Blake Anthony of Blake and Blake Sports. So getting you ready for that Ram Buccaneer game. To me, it's a must win at this point. It's going to be a long road trip, mm -hmm. about six straight road games. Do you think they can put it together here? You can. You just have to play a full game. Like, you got to finish, like uh, Bruce Arians and Ty Bowles says. you yeah. got to finish the game. You've got to make more plays than the other team is making. All right, let's read some more comments here. Detroit up over Kansas City, 13-10 to 10 now. Chargers up 17-10, to 10, so Miami – starting to do what they do best and that is tank you got some browns <laughs> fans in the house i even see her 13 to 13 now all right we're getting updates from the fans here uh let's see kansas city will bounce back in the second half is that what you see kansas city already bounced back Lashawn mccoy with the touchdown they hit it up with the field goal again they are in detroit if detroit can hold on and make this victory happen i believe they can get a wild card spot in the nfc north I digress. It's early yet now. How are we going to let Aaron Rodgers off the hook by throwing at the one-yard line eight times? I'm just finding it funny that we don't even mention that, but that's fine. You sure that wouldn't Russell oh, Wilson? No, no, no. I, I mentioned that at the beginning of this whole show here. We mentioned that, and people will say, well, why do you run the ball with third and two with Peyton Barber? How come you don't throw it? Well, look, it can happen both ways. It can happen where a quarterback's going to throw in the red zone. He's trying to make a play. Does that mean he's a bust? No. Of course it doesn't. It means he's trying to make a play. And look, that was a must-win game by the Philadelphia Eagles in the same situation with the Bucks here coming into a hostile environment. You have to get to 500 and go with two and two. 
versus the L.A. Rams. You can't have Aaron Rodgers being your leading rusher and leading passer. He threw for 422 yards. He rushed for 46 yards. Aaron Rodgers was the offense. Williams went down with the injury. That's fine. I get that. You didn't have Dexter Williams activated for some odd reason out of Notre Dame. Yeah. And Aaron Jones has a busted shoulder, so it was a one-man show. But if you flip the script, Philadelphia was not at full strength. You did not have Deshaun Jackson. Alshon Jeffrey was 50-50. Goddard had the touchdown, but he just got off of the medical report. A full-strength Philadelphia Eagles? This isn't even close against the Green Bay Packers. They would have been flying Eagles fly. <laughs> All right, let's read Scott's comments here. Uh, Bucks need to be competitive today. Must have a running game or it will be a long day for Jameis. And, of course, we're going to talk about this matchup over and over again. The closest thing that I think to Warren Sapp, Aaron Donald, against that offensive line, just unbelievable. And the Bucks got their work cut out for them today, especially Alex Kappa, right? Absolutely. Alex Kappa is going to have a long day ahead of him, just like Ali Marpet did. And I believe I showed that interview with Ali Marpet where he spoke on the first two times um, when he played Aaron Donald. Uh, Alex um, Marpet did get his butt whooped the sure. first time he played Aaron Donald. That's a former or well, future Hall of Famer you're playing against. And when you take a beating like that, you definitely got to take something from it and learn from that. So when you face other oppositions like that, you know how to prepare for something like that. But Kappa is going to definitely get his test today. He's going to have to keep his feet moving. That's the only way he's going to be able to survive that battle with Aaron Donald. Let's talk about the yeah. wide receiving position here. You have Mike Evans off of three touchdowns, a career day. They still don't win. Chris Godwin is hurt with a hip injury. Do you think it's Bashard Perryman? Who steps huh. up today? Because somebody mentions there's no third wide receiver on this team. Is it O.J. Howard? Is it Perryman? Or is it somebody else? Are you reading my articles? Where is the wide receiver three? That's a big question. They got Scotty Miller from, I believe, Bowling Green to try to fill in that slot. They're still missing Adam Humphreys from Tennessee. Let's not mention Humphreys. He's no longer with the team. Bashard Perriman has a total of three catches for 16 yards. One rush for 13 yards. That's not going to get it done. It's week four in the NFL. Godwin is going to be covered by the number two, which is going to be Peters. And Tlaib and Evans are going to be at each other's throats if they are going to win this game. OJ needs to expose Clay Matthews. And for the love of God, Bashard Perriman, <laughs> please show up. Where uh, is Perriman? Where is Perryman? Where is and I was saying that last week on the sports web, will the real Mike Evans and O.J. Howard stand up? Will the real Rashard Perryman stand up and be that well, maybe deep he is threat standing. option? Well, he's not doing nothing. <laughs> That's it. He may be standing, Peter. He might be standing. Fourth year wide receiver, <laughs> yep. two years in Baltimore. Did they I cut him. He years? was productive in Cleveland, yep. but they really don't need him, especially now with OBJ and Landry. And I'm actually a fan of Higgins. I'm, Higgins has grown a, on me. He's a good receiver. But with that being said, if Tampa can't rely on the offense, the defense needs to be opportunistic. They need to take a page out of the Chicago Bears playbook from Sunday Night Football from last week, last year actually, crowd the line of scrimmage, put pressure on golf, because just like the Joker said, he's one of those squealers. If you start to hit him, he's erratic. He starts missing the open wide receivers. He but if the defense doesn't react, and if we can't get pressure on the quarterback, it's, it's going to be a long it's day. It's going to be a long day, but it is. We are here live on the Evolution of Sports Talk Television, live here on Bucks Report. It's the Sports Web. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming, newest Bucks Report writer, also Fantasy and Flavors, and, of course, Mr. Blake Anthony of Blake and Blake Sports. Join the 63,000 following we have here on Facebook Live at first, 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. Great food, great service. I don't know if you had any wings yet or any food, but we're going to definitely get you hooked up here, and we'll have Leo Haggerty just along here in a few moments getting you ready for the pre-show. But let's talk about that matchup with Aqib Tlaib in the past. Jameis, you know, he kind of uh, really went into the fire versus Tlaib and the Broncos through a couple interceptions. Now you have to leave the former Buccaneer facing Mike Evans coming off one of his best weeks. So how do you see this matchup playing out? Uh, they're going to double Mike. They're going to try to force Winston to get to the ball to somebody else because not only that we're saying the same thing about our receivers, they're saying the same thing as well. Like I said, the one threat that we can't let him let get loose is Mike Evans almost going off for 200 yards receiving yesterday. Godwin has played well, but I think they're going to make either ball go to Godwin or take both of them away and force us to go to O.J. Howard or go to our third receiver or our third receiving option. Yep. That's why I said previously 
you need to get to these backs in the open space. They need to beat one-on-ones, whoever's in front of them, and get these extra yards and take pressure off your quarterback. And somebody writes, uh, Ray's watch party here Wednesday with DJ uh, Mad Mac and Bucks Report Live. I don't know. Why not? Maybe maybe we'll come out here on Wednesday night and do a live Ray's watch party with Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy. Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy, where is he at? We'll definitely get him on. We'll get somebody on here on the Evolution of Sports Talk Television. I got to get your thoughts. I know we're talking football here, but the Tampa Bay Rays, tremendous season, lots of injuries, only one starting pitcher, <laughs> multiple injuries, and they continue to get it done, and they clinch on Friday night. What's your thoughts on the Rays situation? I was jumping for joy when they got it. Lowest, pay, uh, lowest salary in baseball, lowest expectations from our, from, well, hey, from our fan, for a lot of people who don't support them and those who don't watch the Rays. Yeah. And, and two, two years back-to-back, over 90 wins. So I uh, think this team has earned some respect. Alex Fleming. Montreal's pretty. <laughs> Tampa's prettier. <laughs> if you want to keep the Tampa Bay Rays here, fans, people, social community, show up. <laughs> this team made it to the wild card. And if they beat Oakland, they're going to need all the support that they can get. You care about the trop? You care about your team? Show it. Well, Show up. I'll tell you right now, if your owner doesn't come out halfway through the year and say that he's going to go to Montreal, I think your attendance would be okay. I definitely think there's going to be some, some support uh, when if they do, and I think they can beat the Oakland Athletics. They come back here, they'll definitely get that support uh, that they need. Somebody says uh, Baltimore, Houston, and Giants start third quarter with the ball. Uh, Alex's arms are the size of Peter's whole body. All right, Johnny Dean, the professor. Uh, Tucker ties it up for the Ravens, 10-10, to and OJ needs to be a major factor uh, tied in to nickel and dime these Rams to death. I agree because, look, three catches for 66 yards, but here's a player in Howard who could be one of the best tight ends in the league, but he's got to show out, and he hasn't been able to do that early part of the season. Nope, that's a lot of it's been his own demise. The fumble earlier on. Miss drop catches, miss blocking assignments. Week one was horrendous for him. Week two against the was the Panthers didn't really do much. Goose egg. But block, yep, a block. Um, week three made a couple catches. Probably should have had, a, probably should have scored on, caught, uh, scored on that pass interference play yeah. if it hadn't been a pass interference yeah. as he smoked the uh, the DB on that play. Uh, so he did. So it looked like his confidence is coming back. But also, I, I was I've really been paying attention to what kind of coverage is going on at OJ. But what I do watch from O.J. Howard, what I don't like when he runs his routes, he peeks around where the defenders are instead of just running his route and getting set and being available for your quarterback to throw the ball. That's the thing I don't like about when he runs his routes. That's just from my uh, paying attention to detail. Yeah, and this is your Mm. pre-pre-show here live on the sports web, the evolution of Sports Talk Television live here nightly on Bucks Report at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming. Uh, Blake Anthony here uh, live. We had Tampa Bay Ray Kennedy before, and we'll also have uh, Mr. Leo Haggerty coming along here. So I tell you what, I know a lot of people want to watch the game, so we'll get off here, let the sound come back on for all these fans. Alex Fleming, your final thoughts. Look for double tight end sets today. Look for Tanner Hudson to probably sneak some plays in, if not Cameron Brait. Double tight end set, pound the ball with Peyton Barber, home run hitter with Rojo. If they can get the run game going, O.J. Howard beats Clay Matthews. You and I could beat Clay Matthews across the middle. Two sacks last week. Watch out now. He could still rush the passer. He but can still rush the passer. Coverage is you're exactly right. Double tight end sets is going to be key. Pressuring golf, getting pressure on him. A couple of sacks. They can make this happen. This is not that big of a mismatch. Yes, we don't have the same wide receiver core. They don't have our defense. There you go. Mr. Blake, uh, Anthony, your final thoughts. You're going to have to keep yourself out of uh, long – Third and longs, like like Alex said, if you can't get the run going, you got to get your backs involved some way. You have to take pressure off of James, Jameis Winston, or it's going to be really, really ugly and rough fast. Because they're not going to, they're going to try their best to not let us run this ball and be one dimensional. I can guarantee you that. I guarantee you, at least two series are they're going to the box is going to be loaded and they're going to force us to try to air the ball out and yeah. they're going to get to our quarterback and strip sack. I guarantee it. All right, there you go for Alex Fleming, Tampa Bay, Ray Kennedy, Blake Anthony. I'm your host, Peter Blake. Enjoy the games, and we'll be back about 3 o'clock, 3.15 with Leo Haggerty. We always say, bring your passion, bring your excitement. Just don't bring any nonsense. We'll see you later.
Now in the Sports Web, a sports talk show for the hardcore fan. Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense. At Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast. Shores of Panama. Radiant elegant and spectacular steps away from white sugar sand every room overlooks the turquoise of the gulf of mexico come in for your tour today life's a beach realty is your gateway to shores of panama the shores and a whole lot more yeah thirsty at Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast. Shores of Panama. Radiant, elegant, and spectacular. Steps away from white sugar sand. Every room overlooks the turquoise of the Gulf of Mexico. Come in for your tour today. Life's a Beach Realty is your gateway to Shores of Panama. The Shores and a whole lot more. the sports web a sports talk show for the hardcore fan bring your passion bring your excitement just don't bring any nonsense hey guys what's going on welcome back here to ferg's live in st pete as the tampa bay buccaneers at halftime leading the la rams 28 to 17 here on the sports web i'm your host peter blake along with mr alex fleming mr blake anthony here you guys got to switch you guys are lower thirds are all messed up here you guys got to switch i don't know why you guys did that to me but uh yeah you know thinking of switcheroo here who would have thought this that the bucks being the underdogs that they were just coming out taking it to the rams right away big time drive peyton barber for a touchdown you look at Jameis Winston statistics, 18 for 27, 203 yards and two touchdowns at this point. Chris Godwin tearing it up at this point. Right, Alex? Um, yum, 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 yum. Mike uh, Evans, Akeem Tlaib, we knew that matchup was going to be a 50-50. But Chris Godwin, enter Chris Godwin. Nine receptions, 125 yards, two touchdowns. OJ did it. Three receptions, 33 yards. Yes. Rojo, 20 yards on the ground with the touchdown. Offense is clicking on all cylinders. And relatively, you know, the big-time matchup, thinking about it, was Aaron Donald. You really haven't heard much from Aaron Donald, that offensive line, doing a bang-up job to protect Winston. And lo and behold, when you give a quarterback more than three to five seconds to throw the ball, he picks that defense apart. Amazing, right? It's good to be on the other end of that. Normally that's us giving the, uh, the team's offense 20 seconds to throw the ball on our poor defensive backs getting ripped to shreds but only i got one thing to say i hope uh, a lot of people play chris kiss godman this week in fantasy football with them nine uh -oh. receptions 125 yards uh i had I'm, him on my bench oh sorry peter that's all right I had mike evans out there and i should have listened to you on fantasy and flavors because you've had a pretty good day and you said chris godwin would have it and look it goes back to the matchup right you have a keep to leave versus mike evans if they're putting a safety on top then basically they're giving you one-on-one -on -one coverage with Godwin, and that's exactly what has happened here. It's either Evans or Godwin. This offense is clicking right now. Of course, the fear is after the Bucks defense blew that big-time lead, they give up 14 points. But the response by the offense, once again, they go down Ronald Jones with the touchdown. And I tell you right now, guys, Ronald Jones had a big-time run 
if not Negated. for that yep. penalty by the Bucks. Illegal shift, as a matter of yes. fact, not holding. Got to stop that. Than that. Illegal shift. Right. Um, yeah, the Bucks came out firing on all cylinders the first half, much like they did against the Giants. Now they just have to maintain that in the second half and not get complacent with your lead because the Rams are showing that they're going to fight back against adversity when they're backed against the wall. And at home, I don't expect them to lay down. So with them being one-dimensional because – Pretty much, we're not mentioning Todd Gurley. It was it was second carry. And the He's second not carry, healthy. The second two carry carries was a touchdown. for right. Two carries for 14 yards. He has a touchdown, but he doesn't look healthy at all. He doesn't look like he has that same explosive effect. And look, coming into the game, the Bucks have done a bang up job versus running backs. They've been tested. This defense is for real. They got to play a complete game in that second half. But right now, having a big lead that takes your running game out of it for the Rams. Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense on the run has been solid. Not much for Todd Gurley. He has one touchdown. It was mostly a reception touchdown. Everett, the tight end, we spoke about this. He has one touchdown as well. If it wasn't for a 58-yard Greg Zerline kick and not one but two roughing the passer, pass interference penalties, this will be a lot worse. Tampa looks impressive right they now. They look impressive right now. We're live here at first, 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether we're going to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, home of Bucks Report and the evolution of Sports Talk Television. Join the 63,000 following we have here on Facebook. It's the Sports Web. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Anthony and, of course, Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors. You look at uh, the Bucks defense, Levante David with an interception, Shaq Barrett not getting the sacks but getting enough pressure to cause – those turnovers, so two interceptions by Jared Goff at this point. Once again, the defense causing turnovers and this Buccaneer offense doing what they need to do and capitalizing on it instead of kicking field goals, going in and scoring touchdowns. In hostile territory, you can't kick field goals. Touchdowns are a big remedy for anything you need on the road. Rojo looks good. Barber Caught the first touchdown, ran yep. it in. Yep. O.J. Howard is actually getting receptions three for 33. And, by the way, where are the Winston haters? Winston haters, where are you? Where are you? Winston haters. Yeah, you got Winston haters in the background, but right now they have to be quiet because, once again, he's played a clean game, and it goes back to what we talked about, fellas. It's all about run-pass differential. It's that Libra in me. It's the balance scale you have to have. It. And even though they're not successful with the running game, it's a commitment to it. They're making that commitment. And when the Rams are basically bringing that eight man in the box, they have that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Once they start to bring the eight man in the box to stop that running game, that's when you see those deep shots down the field. Winston did miss Evans wide open, underthrew him, but overall a clean game by this quarterback. You notice that Eric Weddle tried to gather around his defense and say, hey, we need to shut this down. How did Tampa Bay respond? Chris Godwin, move out the way. Excuse me, Akeem Tlaib. I need to get this second touchdown. Yeah. Yeah, what have you seen overall in this first oh. half that's impressed you? Overall, they, they tried to do what we said, what we all predicted. Right. They tried to limit us in running, which we, we're getting about four yards of carry. League average is four and a half, which we're getting that. Uh, we're getting time to throw, which people didn't think we would have. We're getting that. Receivers are catching the ball with space. I believe they just showed that on SportsCenter a little minute ago with the space the receivers have on um, with catching the ball between sure. the defender. But like you guys said, if you're going to roll that coverage with man under coverage, man under meaning you go man with the corner underneath with the safety over top on Evans, it is freeing up everyone else. Everybody else understands their job. They have to get win their one-on-one -on -one matchups and get free fast enough for Winston. Now, Winston does have to get the ball out quicker to the backs underneath. He's tried a couple attempts. One was tipped. I think the other one was an errant throw. Um, but if you get those more and more, like we said earlier, get the ball out faster, those are, those are extended handoffs, essentially. And I think, again, you go back to this big matchup, which we yeah. talked about at nauseum about Aaron Donald. He's been a non-factor. So I think in the second half. Well, you know, you know why that is, right? Alex Kappa. Well, you know they practiced. Did you know who practiced being at? Aaron Donald this week, Pat O'Connor. There, there you go. Aaron Donald in practice in there practice you go. team this week. And he said they had a very, very successful practice with him pretending to be Aaron Donald. And it and it looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, he's been a non-factor at this point. So kudos to the offensive line. Of course, you have to play 60 minutes of football. Yep. We talked about it last week at 28 to 10 lead. You have a 28 to 17 lead. You have their foot on their throats. Keep the pedal to the metal. Keep on doing what you do. I don't want to go conservative. 
<laughs> if, if you're able to be successful with the pass, go with the pass at this point. Speaking of being successful with the pass, I'm just noticing that Jameis Winston has six completions to six different receivers. Bashard Perriman, he went out. Where is wide receiver three? It looks like it's going to be Watson. Watson's got a catch for 13 yards. Yeah. Braid's got a catch for 13 yards. Alana a Rube has a catch. Godwin is just feasting, and you got Evans with two catches for 10 yards. If you keep distributing the ball and everybody's involved in the offense, Tampa's going to be pretty difficult to stop. All right, there you go. So give me your key to the second half of the game besides the obvious of you know, continue to score and do what you did in the first half. Well, absolutely. That's the thing we got to make. Don't get complacent where we're at. Don't think the Rams ain't going to come try to change. They're like, okay, we're having success. Picking at the linebackers with the, with the tight end over the middle. They're going to come back to that. They'll replace that. They'll put a running back in that position and throw that in that spot. But also something we didn't point out earlier, Jared Goff picks where he's going to throw before the snaps. Sure. He, and that's where it came up you with You talked that. about this at the beginning of I the watch, game. Right. You guys know me. I watch tape. I fall asleep watching okay. tape. I watch over and over. He's, he's Sounds knows like you got no social with, life, but that's yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I do. I, it's, it's, it's hard going between the three and get my video games in. Gotcha. But, um, he's, he's, he's decisive where he's going with the ball pre-snap, and he will throw that ball there if it's not – if it's not if it's not there, he will hold the ball. And that's where the other part where somebody else has to get pressure besides Shaq Barrett. Do not think that the Rams are gonna come out this second half knowing that Shaq Barrett has been the demise of their They're offense. They're a better second plan, half team. And plan to stop that. Right. So who's gotta show up? Carl Nassif, Devontae Bond, Nadama Kinsu, Vita Vea, somebody else is gonna have to get to that quarterback or it's gonna be a rough second half. All right, your point here, Alex yeah. Fleming, the key to the game in the second half. Apply pressure. You got your foot on the neck for the second week in a row. Last week, you let your foot off the gas against the Giants. Keep applying pressure. Goff seems like one of those guys that'll squeal. You got, him, you got two picks off him already. You might be able to get one more. Don't stop with the running game. Absolutely. Barber and Ronald Jones, it's working. Pick and pop, pick your poison. If they're going to put eight in the box and stop the running game, Keep distributing with all your wide receivers. Use O.J. Howard and Cameron Bray to security blankets. Get those first downs across the middle. Keep it rolling along. All right, there you go. Bucks up 28-17 to 17 for Blake Anthony. For Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors, I'm your host, Peter Blake. Enjoy the second half of your game. The Sports Web, a sports talk show for the hardcore fan. Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense. At Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast, Shores of Panama. Radiant, elegant, and spectacular. Steps away from white sugar sand. Every room overlooks the turquoise of the Gulf of Mexico. Come in for your tour today. Life's a Beach Realty is your gateway to shores of Panama. The shores and a whole lot more. At Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast, Shores of Panama. Radiant, elegant, and spectacular. Steps away from white sugar sand. Every room overlooks the turquoise of the Gulf of Mexico. Come in for your tour today. Life's a Beach Realty is your gateway to Shores of Panama. The Shores and a whole lot more.
You're now in the Sports Web, a sports talk show for the hardcore fan. Bring your passion, bring your excitement, just don't bring any nonsense. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Sports Web as the Bucks go to 2-2 two and two, as they upset the LA Rams. 55 to 40 with the most points in Tampa Bay Buccaneer history. Who would have thought that? Live at Ferg's, 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Anthony here, Mr. Alex Fleming. And I tell you right now, if you thought the season was over with, buckle in. This team is different. They gave up a lot of points, a lot of yards today by Jared Goff. But they shut down the running game, and they come up with the key turnover. Shaq Barrett, nine sacks to start the season in history of football right now. He's on pace. And Adamic and Sue, former L.A. Ram, 37-yard touchdown return to seal the deal and put the Bucks back at 500. I just want to say thank you to the Denver Broncos for being cheap and not paying Shaq Barrett a million dollars to keep him. Thank you, Denver. I also want to say hello to all you Winston haters. I, I'm having trouble finding you. I'm having trouble find. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? <laughs> 385 yards, four touchdowns, and the pick didn't mean a darn thing. Guys, Jameis Winston, legit. Last week, 380. This week, 385. If you had something to say, shh. Well, I tell you right now, you can't definitely have that interception, of course, that gets the Rams back into the game. But you'll once again, 385 yards, four touchdowns, and he hit eight different wide receivers in this game. But of course, Chris Godwin with two touchdowns, over 160 yards receiving, I think 172, 12 catches, an impressive game. And you know what? With all the people talking about how Winston can't throw the deep ball, <laughs> One of the biggest plays in the game, Mike Evans burns Marcus Peters for that touchdown. In the league. Yep, there you go. So what do you have to say here, Mr. Blake Anthony? Uh, Alex took the, the Winston haters thing away, so that's, I'm glad he got that out the way quickly. I know they'll just talk about the interception, which right. that should that play should have never happened to begin with. It should have just been a ran. Should have ran the ball and punted it because C.J. Logan just was undecisive and put him deep on that drive. But needless to say, didn't matter at this point. Came away with the win. Um, to say to shut down the run, I think the Rams gave up on the run. I think they submitted to us and knew they were going to only be able to pass. You only had 11 attempts on the run. That tells me you didn't try. You didn't even attempt to run the ball. Well, it's about times? the run pass differential yeah. that we talked about with Winston and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The same could be said. Look, Jared Goff threw all those passing yards. But at the end of the day, when you make an offense one-dimensional, you're yep. going to win. And as I told you, gentlemen, and, and Leo was on board with this, Todd Gurley is not the same player. He's not that explosive back. He's running tentative. He has some knee problems. I get it. He scored two touchdowns, but he is not that same player anymore. And I'll tell you right now, give credit to where credit is due because, look, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensively, they got to get better with this passing game, uh, this passing defense, excuse me. But the, the, the run defense – has definitely come to play. So they have some things to work on, especially with the passing defense. But overall, a big-time win. And, and look, national pundits, Tampa Bay media, I don't think there was anybody out there. Blake, you were saying it. I was saying it. Leo was saying it. But nobody could have expected this offensive output by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers over the L.A. Rams. This was a team that was coming in 3-0. and This was a team that basically, not basically, they were a Super Bowl participant last year, a huge win by the Bucs, and a great start for this road trip. Let, let me jump in real quick. Now, yeah. I, don't, I don't normally do this, but uh, everybody knows people I attack and I expect different things, and I'm a man that's going to eat crow when you need to eat crow. The Bucks offensive line, I need to tip my hat to. Thank you. They handled business today. You protected your quarterback. You kept Aaron Donald a non-factor. Donovan Smith didn't give up the yard. Uh, I got I got to give props when props is due, and that's the Buccaneers' offensive line. And of course, Jameis Winston, of course, dominated that that Rams defense all game long. And I tell you right now, to all those fans out there, do you believe 
Do you think the season's over with? Do you think the sky well, is leave falling? Now, if that's Be what you because I'm yeah. telling you right now, it's a different team. I get it. It was a bad taste in your mouth last week with this team blowing the 28 to 10 lead they and missing the field it. goal, but they're learning from it. They're learning how to win. Coach Arians, Coach Bulls has definitely had an impact. Once again, Shaq Beard, you can't say enough. Doesn't have all the sacks. He has nine sacks to start. He could have had more in this game, but they put enough pressure on him, and that would be Jared Goff, and forcing him into those interceptions early on in the game. Shout out and honorable mention to Jared Goff. He did throw for 517 yards. Give credit what credit was due. But I want to focus on a couple of things. Eight receivers. Uh, Break. Three catches, 36 yards. You get a touchdown. OJ, three catches, 33 yards. Uh, Ungabalawule, what, however you say his Ongo name. Wale. He matched, he matched Perriman's complete season so far with three catches for 16 yards. I think I wrote about that. Yep. Yep. Wilson, one catch, 14 yards. Watson, one catch, 13 yards. Oh, and by the way, Matt Gay, it might be PN challenge for a woman, but it's built for a craftsman. The next time Tampa Whoa. Bay Media says something funny about a kicker, you better be able to back it up because he backed it up today. Nice 58-yarder. Yep, 58-yard yep, field goal, 21-yard field goal, and then, of course, uh, no missed extra points at this point, so all good on that end. It was nice for him to come back. It was nice for this team to respond here live at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether you want to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, which has been an amazing week, or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, home of the official away and home watch parties for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you're a fan of the Bucs, come out here. Great food, great service. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Anthony, Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavor. So what other things did you see in this game? Ronald Jones, he could have had a lot more yards. The Bucks kind of, once again, shot themselves on the foot. He had a long run, got called back because of holding. Questionable call, but once again, that's one of the things the Bucs definitely have to work on at this point. But Jones showing up, he's a totally different player than he was last year. Right, Blake? Well, Jones did something I wanted to see him do. He actually got loose. He had to put them legs in stride and show how shifty he is. And I think the one of the key critical parts of the game was Jones on that run in the fourth quarter where it looked like he was going out of bounds. He had the away. You could see it click when it didn't click last year. It clicked. He said, I can't go out of bounds. I need to stay back in bounds. It could keep the clock running. It stayed in bounds, kept the clock running. And that and it's just astronomical, the change from last year to this year. And everybody kept saying that coaching doesn't matter. Does coaching matter? I think so. I definitely think it yeah. matters. And you look at when they're in the red zone, the Bucks took full advantage. You know, they really didn't settle for a lot of field goals today. They scored touchdowns. That's what it was all about. Once again, going back to Chris Godwin in this game, whether it's Mike Evans last week, it was Chris Godwin today. You have a keep to leave in the matchup. You know it. He does get a touchdown versus Marcus Peters. And you mentioned this when they took to leave off of Evans, put Peters. Peters looks totally different. Again, he had the pick six with the very questionable decision, a bad decision by Jameis Winston. And we'll talk about it. We'll be fair. It's not a good throw. It's not a good throw at yeah. all. But mm -hmm. once again, Godwin showing up and this offense showing out. Yum, 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 yum. I think I might have mentioned this. Tlaib got beat by Godwin. Tlaib was matched up with Evans all day. When they put Peters on Evans, what happened? Beautiful pass. Beautiful. We had a skip to Malu. Ronald Jones, <laughs> all last year, he produced 78 yards yeah. under Dirk Cutter. Final tally for Evans, four catches for 89 yards, one touchdown. Chris Godwin, 12 catches for 172 yards, two touchdowns. Even Cameron Brake got in on the action. And look, this is what you were looking at, right? When you got uh, Coach Arians in here, no risk it, no biscuit. Jameis Winston, I get it, one interception, but four touchdowns, 385 yards, and a plethora leo word of weapons that you can go to once again eight different receivers today this offense was really good did you notice how the defense played the bears four six schemed crowded the line of scrimmage yep. frustrated golf hit him 21 times yes and yes. then all of a sudden golf wasn't the same quarterback now he threw for 517 but he made a lot of bad decisions yep. and the fumble with the dominican sue that's a cherry on top of the whipped cream. Right, because, look, Sue is coming back, and I know 
that you have definitely been a critic of Nadamik and Sue, but you have to be happy for Sue coming back Absolutely. to his former place and getting that key touchdown to basically seal the deal for the well, Bucks. Well, you see, we, we both, me and you, both going back and forth by the whole situation. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys that's going to root against my team just to be correct. I didn't ever say Sue was bad, but it is definitely – Great for him, that great feeling that uh, fortunate he was fortunate enough to be the guy for the, that ball laid out right in front of him for an easy scoop and score for the longest 40-yard dash in NFL history I, I to think the he end got zone. A, I think he got a sign, uh, Shaq Barrett, and something interesting yeah. came out of this game from Chris Myers, and it seems like maybe he has some inside here, but the reason why the Bucks did an extension for JPP is basically they were trying to re-sign Shaq Barrett, and at this point, fellas, he has been a man among boys. No, I mean, no, it, excuse me, a man amongst men. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, you're you're talking about a player who started off in four games with nine sacks. He's right up there. Undrafted player. Right. Four games, <laughs> yeah. nine sacks. Yeah. And Denver right now has to be kicking themselves. Let's talk about this Thank defensive you, John line. Elway. Yeah. Let's talk about this defensive line. Vita Vea, you saw him show up. You saw him flash a little bit. We talked about Sue. What about Carl Nassib? What did you see out of him? Kind of a dumb play at the end. And look, I think the refs need glasses at this point because it was definitely a false start by that offensive lineman. He was bobbing his head up and down. If that's not a false start, I don't know what is. I think NASA made the right play. Call NASA made the right play. There were a couple of questionable calls. A lot of home cooking for the Rams, but it didn't help them. All the extra penalty yards they got off of the fake pass interference, off of the false start, off of the encroachment, it didn't matter. Don't because forget you know, the uh, rough in the passer oh. that he already had the quarterback wrapped up when he's throwing the ball, and then it's right. a rough in the passer. Well, you, you get look, those calls at home. Right. Well, uh, you look early on in the game with Clay Matthews doing the exact oh, same driving thing. driving to the ground. And not getting the call. I mean, you've got to be consistent. This is what upsets a lot of fans out there and a lot of you know sports broadcasters. If you're going – to make these calls at least be, be consistent both with both teams at this point. Gotta be both ways. As the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go on to get their second win of the season by upsetting the L.A. Rams 55-40, to 40, their largest point total in Buccaneer history. You heard me correct. Say it again, to, Peter, for the people in the can back. Can you say that again? 55-40. to 40. Double nickel? Double nickel? Double nickel, yes. And you have the Buckaholics out there. I know that they're ready for that reactionary yeah, show. Yeah, so a lot of people happy right now. A lot of people want to talk on the sports web. We call this the evolution of sports talk television. And this is why the fans have a voice here on the sports web we every night. Here. And yeah. you always can come down here when there's road game. I don't know what you're doing with that. He's looking for I'm Winston looking for Winston haters. And they're I'm, not looking. There. Again, I'm looking for them. It's dark out there. Recap it. 28-41. 385 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. Look at uh, Jared Goff's numbers, and as the fan is blowing here, 42 of 63, 517 yards, two touchdowns, but uh, what, three interceptions? Three uh, interceptions right and a fumble. Yep. 68 passing attempts. Yes. 68. That's where the 517 comes in. So people who are going to be like, oh, their secondary can't cover. Now, if you're one-sided, you're going to have 500 now, yards let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. We need to work on the pass defense. True. Tampa's pass defense needs a little work. Yeah. But the fact they went out west and came back with the W, I think all's forgiven. Yeah, no, absolutely. Winning and cures everything. Look, you, you definitely have a test next week. Drew Brees is not there. So Get this Teddy win. Bridgewater, Alvin Kamara, Michael Thomas, you got to go there. But it's like I've talked about throughout the whole offseason, and people say, well, no, coaching, the talent is there. The talent's not there. Coaching doesn't make a difference. Coaching makes a difference. You could see it in this team coming out right away and basically putting their foot on the necks of the Rams. Seven to nothing. That's huge. At about, the end of the night, the worst that we can be in the division is second place. Yeah. The yep. best that can happen, New Orleans loses to Dallas tonight, which is very probable. Yep. And then we are tied in the division for the lead. At worst, we're second place in the division. Thank you, Atlanta. Thank you, Dirk Cutter. And Carolina won today, but we got the tiebreaker. Yeah, and, and we have no losses in the division. Yeah. Also, uh, Alex, I'm going to piggyback off you about Winston. A lot of people are going to say, oh, Arians. Oh, not Arians. Uh, Leftwich takes the ball out of Winston's hands. Sure. You saw after the interception, 
he put the ball back in Winston's hands, and we were able to converge on the downs we needed to converge and seal the deal on that ball game. Uh, you break down tape all the time. Oh, it'll, it'll be it'll tomorrow, go, it'll 3 p.m. Go, go back to right. that 3 o'clock, but let's go back to that throw, an ill-advised one. It looks like Bobo Wilson maybe stops on the route a little bit, but Winston is hit. No excuse, though. You no. can't make that throw. It's underthrown. It's a bad throw, and it's one of those plays that definitely gets the Rams back in there. After Everything after that was pretty much gravy, but there's always one throw a game, I guess, you could expect it. And, and I, I, know, I don't like the call, period. Right. You should have just threw a screen because it, the drive was doomed from the beginning. Right. T.J. Logan got stopped inside the 10. So you already know you're going to run the ball three times. Right. And, and then because you're trying to waste clock at that point, and then you're going to try to th get the first down on third down, knowing they're going to bring a heavy pass rush. You kind of set your QB up on the hook on that one. But Winston got to know better and just go ahead and take that sack or just run or shovel it off to the back or whatever and then just live with them driving down the field and getting them to score versus scoring on a pick six. If you want to come away with something about to say about Winston, you, you can have that one. Yeah, I, I mean, for me, the secondary is yeah. the worrisome thing with this team going forward, right? I mean, so young, though. The right? secondary is so young. young. Jamal so young. Dean played a great game. Bunting got Jamal beat. Jamal Dean didn't play in this game. Jamal right Dean didn't play. Excellent. Yeah. Bunting got beat well by Cooper <laughs> Cup. Yep. Robert Woods had 13 receptions. You expect that from a Super Bowl caliber <laughs> team. But you know what? We bent. We didn't break. break. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And. 55 to 40 bucks over the LA Rams. So I tell you what, let's go out to Box Report. Let's get some questions. Uh, Shaq had a sack, two forced takeaways. And a pick. Could have had more. Yep. On the. Oh, Tipped you, it and do you picked make, it. What do you make of that call to go for it on fourth down? Is it too soon in that game? And the way you go for it, you do it with your punter? I mean, you do it on that situation in fourth down with Jared Goff. Do you agree with that? I, were you saying you could go for it like with a, in the pump formation? With the four, yeah. Oh, okay. No, oh. The, the Rams believe they were better than us. Right. Like you said previously, they're, they're coming off a Super Bowl win, and you're playing a 5-11 and 11 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right. I guarantee they were in that huddle. We're better than them. Let's go ahead and get this first down. And you kind of got shown that you weren't. We we're more aggressive than you, and it showed we were ready. Kevin Minter came through the through the gap as he always did all preseason. He's playing exactly how he's playing yeah. from preseason to regular season. There is no difference. He's playing aggressive, and he started that all that force golf to make that error throw. Shaq Barrett having that thing where I tell you you can't teach people that light that comes on when you make a play. Got his hands up, tipped the ball, and made the intercept. I don't know if you noticed that he tipped it and picked it. Yeah. You know, impressive. Aaron Donald had a couple of tackles, but he was kind of quiet today. He was today. quiet. I mean, and that's where I'm gonna you – change his name to the ghost. Uh, well, look, <laughs> and uh, you know, William Golston showed up in he this sure game. sure did. I, I made some plays when they needed to. So, look, it's not all doom and gloom for this defense. Do they have a lot of things to work oh, on? Oh, yeah. Of oh, yeah. course they do. Oh, yeah. You give up 40 points. You give up over 500 yards. But once again, what's the matchup? possibility what you want to do is make the rams basically one dimensional and that's exactly 11 what they did rushes today. though Peter. how do the comment section look uh, how comment the comments section? alex it was uh, joey deep rushes. says go bucks golf got uh due to being pass only buck did that last year uh technically matt gay missed an extra point but a flag no, on the rams he didn't miss anything. off i get it ben you want to uh Go ahead and be a troll, but it missed nothing. Yeah, it missed Turned nothing. Stats. Two long runs definitely got called back. And once again, that's you know both teams were very sloppy in this game with the penalty situation. It's something that has to be improved. But I tell you right now, I thought the some of these calls by the refs were ticky tacky, just a little bit. Well, it's like you said, it was. It was and those kind of calls are you're going to happen in the game. Unfortunately, cooking. Unfortunately, it happens to us more than it, ha it happens against us. Yeah. And, we, and over and over, we have to learn to overcome that. So if you want to be considered a good team, you have to overcome your other opponent, and that's penalties. Um, Carlton Davis came in. I don't know if you guys knew this. Carlton Davis came into today's game uh, leading in the league with penalties, and that's a defensive back leading the league in penalties. Sure. I don't think he had any today. Right. If I'm not, somebody posted in there. If I'm wrong, I don't think he had any today. But he does go right out. You know who I didn't see get a penalty today? Damar Dotson. Or Donovan Smith. Or Donovan That's Smith. That's why I had to give props early. The right. leaky yeah. offensive line that I have complained about in the past, Damar Dotson was quiet as kept today. Right. But, well, again, Open it goes the big back runs to the matchup Jones, of, of Aaron Donald. Right? I mean, uh, he's a beast, and, and that's the guy that can basically wreck a game. He's up there with Khalil Mack. 
and you basically hold him to what? One tackle? I don't even think he had a sack in nope. this game. Well, so. he had the pressure, but he didn't make the sack on right. that one play. Right. He was quiet. He was quiet. I mean, that that's what you want out of your offensive line. And if he if you wanted anything else, I think you'd be crazy to think it. And uh, once again, we're live here at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue in St. Pete. Whether we're going to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, which I'm going to be here on Wednesday night. I don't know if you guys are going to be here, but we'll be here for a watch party with the Rays playing the Oakland A's in that wild card uh, get-in game. Or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers home, a Bucks report, and the evolution of Sports Talk Television. I'm kind of tired of saying it. Let's improve that 63,000 following. Let's get it up there live on Facebook every night. What else did you see out of this game? Out of this game, I saw – I saw a, a bad repeat of the Kansas City Rams game that was on Monday night. Okay. Offense, offense, offense. Nearly a thousand yards of offense between the two teams. Um, Godwin with two touchdowns, 172 yards. Sure. Evans went off last week. Godwin this week. Break with the touchdown. Barber started it off with the touchdown. Rojo with the touchdown. Everybody on the offensive end, except for Brashard Perriman, is getting involved. And I love it. And he went out with a hamstring injury, so we'll see how that works out because a hamstring injury can be something that you're going to miss some time, and it can be a lingering issue at this point. So most likely they're going to go with the combination of Justin Watson and also Bobo Wilson. How do you think that affect on this offense going forward? Will be? Uh, I think it's going to be probably a little more to Scotty Miller. I don't know if you guys okay. remember earlier in the game. Saw that. That deep yeah. ball, it was to Scotty Miller. Scotty Miller was wide open. Well, it should have been to Scotty Miller, but it was actually to Mike Evans. Was it? It was I couldn't under, tell. It, yeah, was it was under, under th- throw. I think he got hit on that right. play. So it's it, really hard to say. It was one of the few yeah. bad passes today by Jameis Winston. Well, it was hit. He right. was under duress. So sure. I mean, but, yeah, he, he, had his, he had his DBs cooked on that play. So, uh-huh. I, I, so I think he's going to have a couple – <laughs> you like that? <laughs> he was cooked. He's so um, stupid. Um, so, yeah, you're going to see a mixture. I think uh, left switch and Arians are doing a great job rotating these receivers. So sure. you're seeing why we kept the extra wide receiver this offseason because you can't predict injuries. Luckily, we didn't have Mike Evans go. I was concerned that he broke his hand in that uh, in that collision with the two DBs. Well, he but came he, back in the game. Yeah, so I was happy to see that. Right, exactly, yeah. because it looked like he definitely – tweaked his wrist on yeah. that let's read some comments here keep to leave isn't the same player used to be father time is knocking uh, on his door the super bowl last year uh, so right to leave washed up give winston his props we will definitely give winston Absolutely. his props uh vita vea was abusing people a lot of people kind of started to buy into vita vea i mean he got in there a couple times you could see look this guy's 347 he's hard to miss but he's doing spin moves he's making He's making the plays that he needs to make. And what I mean by that is, look, it definitely isn't on the stat sheet, but what you have to do as a defensive tackle in this defense is penetrate, penetrate. And once you get that penetration, then it frees up those outside guys like a Shaq Bear and also like a Carl Nassib. Vita Vea has a Ferrari engine and a Dodge Longhorn body. (laughs) I was going to say Nissan Titan. He played special teams when he was a Washington Husky, uh, yeah. making special team tackles. Yeah. Vita Vey and Dominican Sue has been imposing their will each and every game so far this season. If the secondary can catch up, oh, it's not outside of the realm to say that Tampa Bay can win this division. And look, I'm going to say this right now. This defense will get better. These young players that you're talking about, and a Mike Edwards, and a Carlton Davis, even a Vernon Hargraves who doesn't necessarily know this defense at this point, We'll get better. MJ Stewart, I think, is a weakness at this point, but he'll get better, hopefully. They have to get better. He has one of the toughest jobs, though. I know a lot of people keep beating on him. Right. Playing the well, slot he's easy to corner. beat on because it seems like he's getting beat by playing, these wide receivers. Playing that slot position is the hardest position. Right. Because when you play outside the numbers, you can't run outside. That's You have a sideline as your defender. Sure. So now you're playing slot. You can go left or right, and yeah. you don't have help. So every drag routes – not getting pressure is or easy to or easy throws if the receiver has any type of speed. So that's why it looks like he's just getting abused when actually not most of the game he's not. I mean, he's making a lot of plays. He's making the tackles he needs to make. To say he's just getting roasted all the time, I think is a little far fetched. But I, th- he's making some plays and then he's giving up some plays. But you, if you can give, if you can make more plays than you give up, sure. I can live with that. Sure, it's a good day for Florida football unless you're a Dolphin fan. Oh God, they're still tanking. <laughs> they don't care. Oh, they- 
Jacksonville Man. is Have they second. Been yet? I, I don't know. I don't Jeez. know. Duval pulled it out at the Duval. end, winning 26 24 against the Denver Broncos. Leonard Fournette is a man. Glad 226 yards on the ground today. Choo -choo. You better ask somebody. He's not 43, is he? 43? No, he didn't run like he was 43. No, he didn't run like he was 43. 200, over 200 yards, 210 yards today by Leonard Fournette. 226. Who, by the way, I started in my fantasy team Good job. over Chris Godwin. Well, over Godwin Chris was Godwin. worth 41 right. points in fantasy. Right. But when you get 226 yards on the ground, you're forgiven. Okay, there you go. All right, what you're watching right now is the evolution of Sports Talk Television live here from Ferg's. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors and also Mr. Blake Anthony. We'll have your reaction show after this as the Sunday night football game is going on. So you guys will have to talk. Uh, you, know, you guys will have to have that mic up a little bit so I can hear. I'll get these guys out of here. Let's read some more comments. Man, give the Redskins a break. Laugh out loud. Jay Gruden might be gone tonight. I mean, look, I don't think he's gone tonight because they're starting a rookie quarterback in they that situation. They well, didn't start. Case Keenum started. Right. He got benched, and they put they put Dwayne Haskins in a bad situation. You don't have Trent Williams. You have a medical staff that's been diagnosing, misdiagnosing, and hurting players. Yeah, you got a failure. secondary that doesn't want to cover anybody. Landon Collins all up in his feelings. Offensive line that doesn't protect Keenum, let alone Dwayne Haskins. He threw three picks, a pick six to Jabril Peppers. I mean, if you're really going to blame Dwayne Haskins for a bad performance after you bench a placeholder in Case Keenum, it starts with the coach. So you're it gonna actually fire starts the with the administration, and then right. it goes down to the coach. Sure. But I don't think you're going to fire the coach tonight. Uh, it, it's been disappointing. Again, who? Right. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't get it. A lot of people calling for his head. Uh, let's keep in mind, too, the Rams had two new starters on the offensive line, so that helped the Bucks it. get to People golf more than Rams. usual. They, they mentioned this in the it. game. Well, look, it. it's consistency. The Rams, with their offensive line, they had consistency all throughout the year. They had we starters. We have the 19th ranked offensive line. I don't want right. to hear nothing. They didn't about say that somebody. last week. I don't want to hear nothing right. about somebody having an excuse for the Rams. You didn't pick us to win. You had us losing, getting blown out. I don't want to hear nothing. Excuses coming for the Los Angeles Rams. I'm in multiple uh, chat rooms uh, online, uh, on Facebook, and different there. venues, and everybody had jokes and memes about the Tampa Bay Bucks. Now, all of a sudden, where you at? Well, Crickets. They're not, they're not there. Crickets. They're not there. They're 45. Quiet, and that's okay. Colt 45. That is absolutely <laughs> all right as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers go on to get their second victory of the year, 55-40 to 40 over the L.A. Rams, who came into this game favored by what? Eight points? Yeah. And that Over was under. that was that Eight. was nice depending on who you're talking to. Right. Exactly. All right. Let's read some more comments here. Uh who won? If I said that it would be an excuse. Ninety three got some speed. Sue Sue. Sue no Studio. Speed. Peter could beat him in a uh, <laughs> Shut up and be quiet. I think the Bucks should uh script their plays for the second half coming what? out of halftime. Uh Ronald Jones lost a hundred uh, yards, yep. penalties. penalties yep. Agree with that. It had over hundred and fifty. Yeah, Ooh. and that's one thing you could say. The Bucs definitely have to improve on. This team has to improve on going forward is the penalty situation. So, Peter. But I, I was watching the replay on some of the calls, the holding calls. They're, they're not good, man. They're not good. You know, I'm going to play them tomorrow. I know. Um, I just have a question for everybody. Yeah. So, who do you got? You know, I like to post that thing with Peyton Barber and Ronald Jones. I don't know if you ever saw that, Alex, where I put them against each other. Who do you got right now for week five? Ronald I think Jones? you start Ronald Jones. Or I think Peyton you Barber. have to start Ronald Jones. I think you start Ronald Jones. I you think Ronald Jones is the one. Right. He's I, I, the one. <laughs> he's the guy that gives you the best opportunity at this point. Can I ask you a question? Sure. There was a post, who do you have, Jared Goff or Jameis Winston? I would pick Jameis Winston for two reasons. One, Jameis doesn't have the same offensive line. Two, I love Mike Evans, but Jared Goff has more weapons. And we just saw what happens with proper planning and a piss-poor performance. I think Jameis Winston outplayed Goff in every way, shape, and form, had less turnovers, played a better game, and got that W on the road. And that's the exact reaction that you had to have from this team after giving up that big lead and losing to a rookie quarterback at Raymond James, 32-31. to Now you come back, you respond. And the key thing is, once again, I'm a balanced guy. I think it's the Libra in me. You got to have that running game. You look at the run pass differential. The Rams basically gave up on the running game because the Bucks defense 11 made carries, them Peter. give up on it. 
and you you basically make a team one dimensional and you got them right where you want them. So that is the difference right now between Jared Goff and Jameis Winston. And, and it was crazy coming into the game, Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley. But I told you, he's not the same player as he was. He's hurt. His knee is not right. So that team may struggle. And it's just what we always talk about in the NFL. Not for long. You don't know it. Just because they're a Super Bowl participant doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be that good the, the upcoming year. But, look, give them credit. They came back in the game, but the Bucks put them out when they needed to. Absolutely. I'd like to send a shout-out to Jesse Phipps. Happy birthday, young man. Thank you for being you. Beautiful day. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see it. I see it. Cowboys versus the Saints at 820. That's okay. Uh, so we'll get off here. We'll still do your reaction show. Uh, just make sure if you do get on and remember, download the Live app. We'll send you out the link, and we'll get you on here on the Sports Web, the evolution of Sports Talk Television. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Uh, Blake Anthony and Alex Fleming, newest Bucks report writer. All right, let's see here. Trenches matter. Uh, Melvin, uh, Shack attack. I'm going to enjoy this one. 55 to 40, go Bucks. He's looking, he's looking more like Quan every week. Who? Need to Wait, correct who, who, that. who? Did you just compare Shaq Barrett to Quan Alexander? Is that what just happened? No, I don't think so. I think that may be uh, uh, I don't they know. they play two different positions, right. two different jobs. Right. Somebody says Jameis played lights out once again to be Owned fair. Owned that defense. That, that, Owned right. that right. defense. Absolutely. Owned. And it was a great game plan. And with everybody saying, get, look, do you, which, do you believe? Leftwich knows what he's doing. Well, I mean, <laughs> look, the whole thing was – does this offensive staff believe in Winston going forward? It's obvious. I would have to say 41 times, 28-41, <laughs> 385, 4 You touchdown. get a touchdown. I think yeah, they you do. You get a touchdown. I this team should be 3-1. and one. Right. This but team I'm not should be 3-1. I'm just yeah. going to play on what we can do forward and take them. What I say, we lost those two we should have got. We need to get two back that everybody counted us out. This was one. So we got to get one more to even that out. Next week's game doesn't look that bad now, does it? No, it doesn't. No, and, and, and I, and we and I never Ron. thought it did look bad because, no. look, anytime you're without Drew Brees, you got Teddy Bridgewater. Look, I get it. They get a good win versus the Seattle Seahawks. You can have that. But this is an offense that can score points. There's question marks about the Saints defense, as always. So it could be another shootout. Can you win games in the NFL like that? It's It's risky. But eventually, I think this defense will get better and correct some of these problems at this point. Yeah, it's definitely the secondary. They're going to sure. get better coming over time. Yeah. They're very, very young. But it's just, like I said before, you got to make more plays than you give up. Yeah. As long as you do need to make the ones you need to make, you'll come out with W just like you did today. We made some plays we need to make. Game plan and scheming means a lot. Dalvin Cook is the leading rusher in the NFL. And before today, he had 375 yards rushing. He met that Chicago Bear defense and club dub 25 yards in the first half, 35 total with one touchdown. Not in Chicago, not in Soldier Field, not in their house. Yeah. Defense and planning matters. All right, let's read this comment here. Ben Cornett trolling out a 1,000, I guess. Get he's it, taking ben. over for Corey Brown. Get it, Ben. Alex sounds like he wants to get Fruity and Winston Haters uh, booties. I, I don't – look, oh, Lord, I think he's Alex, calling don't respond, out – the Don't people respond, that are talking about <laughs> Jameis Winston. Uh, enough with that. Ryan Smith back next week off a of suspension. Don't care. Uh, correct. <laughs> I was hating on Winston a few weeks ago for the first time ever, but I, I got off that after the first game. That's what Chris Wood said. Our secondary needs work. I agree. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Wisely careful. Uh, gets upset when criticized. Uh, this was an elite pass team. All they could do is pass. Bucks had their number. Corey Brown, we're getting Justin Evans back. I, I think they're happy with what they have at this point. But Jeff and Evans might not see the field. Yeah. Uh, Matt uh, Colson, well, if he doesn't like it, then he shouldn't be on uh, this show. I, I don't know what that means. I'm back. I had to catch Coach's interview. I love my Bucks. We had to come out and party today. Good stuff, Jason. Bucks defense comes up big tonight with a sack fumble recovery for a touchdown. Hell, yeah. It was encouraging to see that. And once again, how do you win in the NFL, boys? You win margin. by winning the turnover battle. They had the critical interception. People are going to talk about it. It's okay. But once again, this defense did everything they could to cause this quarterback to do things he didn't want to. And that comes with not only sacks, but pressures and hurries and hits. So Chicago Bear formula last year, Sunday yep. night football. And they were also mentioning Mike Zimmer, uh, Mike uh, 
Zimmerman with the uh, A gap defense with the double A gap. Yeah, we were tearing them up with that. Right, forcing goes. You know, you know why that is. Explain right? Explain that. Get into the X's all and O's right, of what they're right. talking you know, about. Yes, you know, Mike I'm gonna Zimmerman. do it tomorrow. So while they kept saying it's about not the double, Zimmerman, it's Zimmer. I'm sorry. The reason you kept running the double A gap blitz, the bluff and blitz, is because when you do that, golf has to in the center have to call. Uh, the pinch protection, whatever you want to call, whatever they call it. So what that is is the, the the tackles and the guard pinch down. So what does that do for the guys on the outside? They're one on ones. So that's why Shaq Barrett's able to beat them on the edge. That's why Carl Naps is able to drive the tackles back into the quarterback. That's why that's important. It was also why I call it bluff. Is why you run that and drop back. Sure. That's why I told you earlier. Golf will stare down his receivers and throw where he's going to throw before the snap and and. Uh, Devontae David was able to get under that route and threw it right to him, and that was out of the double A gap bluff. You read my mind. I was yeah. about to give you credit for that yeah. because in the pregame you said that Goff has a tendency stare of staring down, down its receiver. main receiver where the ball is going to go. Oh, yeah. He takes one read, goes to his second option, and he holds it stares and him down. Yep. That's how Levante David got that beautiful interception. Yep. All right, there you go. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's read some more comments, and then we'll get off. We'll get your reaction show. I'll get these guys on here in a final word. Uh, we do need to get better passing defense, but they played one hell of a game. Sue Fumble Recovery, former team. That's right, Corey. That was awesome for him. Uh, this is what I don't get with fans. We win, and yet they're still, still looking at how we could have yep. been better. Yep. Why? Well, look, there's all – look, I'm not going to sit here and say that I got my fan hat on because when I'm in front of this camera, I'm a sports broadcaster. You're both sides. I'm going to be unbiased, okay? But they have things they have to work on. Absolutely. Okay? Let's, Absolutely. let's not act like this is done – they need to work on now, this the is past 50 defense. to nothing be another conversation. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 55 40. There's plenty of film, plenty of things to work on. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Let's see here. Um, Lewis is tuned in. What's going on, Cornell? Uh, you only get better when you fix those problems. Defense still gave up 40 spot or offense. Can't put up 55 points. Well, hold on. Uh, let me jump in week, real quick. Let's talk about something week. we didn't talk about. Right. Matt Gay's bouncing back. Yes. Let's talk about that before we skip past that. Well, we didn't skip a past it, but 58-yard field goal yeah. is huge. Uh, makes it 31-20, to 20, uh, and it really gives them momentum. And, look, everything that was talked about this week with the secret ad and with him missing the 34 Taking shots yards, left and right. right. Taking this shots. was a good response by a young kicker. Well, let me say this. Last week, if stats weren't that bad. No. I, at first, I was like, damn, not again. Then I actually looked at his stats. He was four for five. Yeah. He would have been five for five. He made the game winner. Unfortunately, it was the one to win the game, and that's all everybody remembers. Yeah. He did miss the extra point, but the other one wasn't because of him. It was blocked. Yeah. So he was responsible for a missed field goal and a missed extra point. I hope the local news station has some Matt Gay highlights since they decided to highlight Carly Lowen in the secret ad. They won't do that. Well, you know, that, look, it, again, they got to do what they got to do. I understand. I get it. I understand. The only response to that is Matt Gay doing what he did Getting today the win. and respond. There you go. And what you're watching right now is the evolution of Sports Talk Television live here from Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. Whether you want to watch the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Tampa Bay Rays, or, of course, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with their big-time win, 55 points, most points in franchise history. Get down to Ferg's. If you want to be a fan, you want to get on camera, have a voice because this is the evolution of of Sports Talk Television. I'm your host, Peter Blake. Along Speaking with of the Rays, they play Wednesday, right? Yes, they do. Blake they, Anthony, and, of course, you got Alex Fleming. What's going on? So they got a watch party here on Wednesday, right? Yeah, watch first? party on Thursday. I think we'll definitely be here. I definitely think the evolution of Sports Talk Television will be here. Will you guys be here? Because, look, everybody can I'm do off, it. So I can do it if you, okay. if you want to do it. All right, let's do it. Uh, okay. Let's see. Carlton Davis was hurt on the last kickoff. I hope he's not going to miss uh, time from that. That was on a they waste of play. Off, so I was right. Happy. No way the Rams were going to score 15 in the time remaining. Nope. Let's go Bucks. If Todd Bowles quits blitzing so much, Rams wouldn't have scored so I many points. I don't think they blitzed a whole lot. Right. When you the, get, well, let me, the problem was they couldn't necessarily always get there. Give the Rams credit. What did I say at halftime? Right. Somebody else has to get to the quarterback sure. besides Jack Barrett. Sure. You have to. You think they're not. That's right. There go you go. Bucks. You want to get on? Come here. <laughs> I said, come on, come I said, come on, come you on. think, they're, on the you think they're not going to game plan? Come on. For Shaq Barrett in the second half, and they absolutely did. Good. Sit on, sit down here, and this is what. And that's all right. Go ahead and get on that camera right there. You're on the evolution of Sports Talk Television, sir. What's your name? David. David. Okay, talking to that mic there, David. What do you think about that big win versus the Rams, 55 to 40? Awesome win, and hopefully we can keep it up. All right. Are you confident in Jameis Winston? Because yes, he played terrific, and other than the first game, the guy's been on the mark. All right. Tell me something. 
Are you going to be here next week versus the New Orleans Saints to get on the mic again? I'm going to try. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot for coming on the sports web. All right. You got it. There yeah, you good go. Night, guys. So that's what you get here. A fan's voice. We're talking to fans here. We'll get your reaction show in just a little bit. Let's finish out with some more comments and then uh, we'll get you guys out of here. It's been a long but a great day, great food, great service live here at Ferg's. Just an intense crowd. Uh, to next week, it's a 1 o'clock game, so we'll be here early, probably about 9, 10 o'clock getting on, so you guys get up early with us. And then, of course, the London game, Mark Ferguson has informed me there will be a breakfast buffet. Hopefully there's pancakes, chocolate chip with whipped cream. Hopefully there, Mark Ferguson. So. Uh, waffles, bacon. Uh, and omelets without vegetables, right? I have a question from Mr. Decker who chimed in. Yes. Uh, how does a Super Bowl caliber team give up 55 points to a lowly NFC South team? That's the real question you should ask. Well, I know who that is. That's Cameron Decker. He's a big-time Patriots fan. Congratulations to his team today with a big win over the Buffalo Bills. It with was a non-helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact hit. On uh, Josh Allen, but that's okay. He's not Brady. No, there you go. Uh, Vernon says, plus the Bucks game, uh, how many field goals playing the NFC champions and winning should boost everyone. Absolutely great win on the road. Definitely something to build on. Great team win. Go Bucks. The defense actually scored all the winning points. The offense didn't do all the damage. They did enough. They did absolutely enough on that, Matt. And once again, I get it. You're not the biggest Winston fan. But once again, look at the numbers. 28 for 41, 385, four touchdowns. I get it, one interception. But, my friend, you can't be disappointed with this offense. Offense scored when and they needed to the score. And red zone efficiency. You can't take that away. I don't, I don't care where you side right. on that. Score it when they need to score. Move the ball when they need to move the ball. You could say whatever you want as a Winston fan or whatever. But if you're a true Buccaneer fan, you know exactly what happened out there today. They executed when they needed to execute, especially on offense. Defense did enough that they needed to do to win. I said this last week. The Bucs technically scored enough points to win that game against the Giants. Yeah. Defense gave it up at the end of the game. 31 points should be enough to win any football game in this league. Listen to this name, God's Gift Homemade Salsa. We all knew they were going to struggle the first few games, but Bruce's system works. They're just starting to settle in. I yep. like it. Starting I to like see the it. name there. It makes me think of tacos, but we had chicken today, so we're good to go. We'll do that on Tuesday. Should we play more coverage defense instead of man? What do you know? There's more than just those two coverage people. Right. There's zone blitzes. They started there's with man zone. zones. There's off man. There's off man. There's off zone. There's inside leverage zones. There's there are so many different things than just cut and dry. We're either running man or we're running zone. Why is he playing so far off? You play off people because you have inside leverage. A safety is supposed to come down and jump routes. I saw That's Tampa why. play zone cover man deep cover two, uh four six quarters quarters. I mean it's um. <laughs> It was the appropriate defenses at the time. Right. I just hate when people just act like they just know so much about it. There's more than two. There's more than two defenses in this league. Man, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going <laughs> to down the fans here because they're passionate about it. They want to see this team. Win I get it. And that's what we're it. here for on the sports and, web. And that's why I try to help yes. educate. Oh, right. Yeah. That's why I don't like to call people stupid or right. ignorant. I get it. I try to teach you the best way I can that there's different things that go on sure. besides one one or two things. Right. It's not vanilla like that. Absolutely. Uh, two field goals, but four touchdowns, one pick six. Okay. All right, Ben. Uh, the defense can give up all the yards in the world, but they wasn't giving up touchdowns all day long. Matt, Mike Evans finally caught a ball thrown in front, and lo and behold, oh, he got Lord. yak and scored. We win, and you're trying to find reasons Go why it's Winston's all right. fault. Oh, uh, the announcers were saying oh. something along the lines of, oh, you know, that was disrespectful, Mike Just Evans. Sk team. Skipping into the <laughs> end zone uh, at this point. Did you have a problem with that? I mean, look. You was happy I think when Vegas Jackson lost, did it. I think Vegas lost some money because everybody thought that the Rams yeah. were going to win this game. <laughs> all right, good stuff. Uh, I was so stressed watching the game. I'm glad we pulled it out. It says Anthony. Bobo needs to clean up his routes. Agree with that? Who? He's a young receiver, Bobo Wilson. Well, first, I thought he stopped on it. I thought he well, stopped on it. Well, I don't route. know if you're talking about that play. Yeah. But in, in defense, I'm going to break it down tomorrow since okay. that seems to be an area of topic. You can't even see what Bobo's route is on the tape. Yeah. So for you to say Bobo needs to clean up his route, I know you can't see it because of the camera angle. Sure. So for people to say that, I know you can't well, see I what Well, I think you watched the replay, and it yeah. looked like he stopped on the I, route. It was an errant throw. Sure. Because Winston should have never Underthrown. thrown that. Yeah. Because you saw the uh, the tackle get pushed in his lap. Yeah. You can't drive the ball with your legs because somebody's in your lap. So that's what I think it is. I don't think it had anything to do with Bobo. 
I said from the beginning, I didn't like the call, period. Right. Run it, punt it, and let them drive down the field. If they score, they score. The problem is you don't necessarily have that much confidence in the defense because they did very I get it. little to stop I get the Rams' it. offense, yeah. right? I would like to suggest maybe Walmart, I don't know, <laughs> Office Depot, <laughs> other places, they have stress balls. <laughs> it's been two weeks now. You couldn't blame Winston last week. Relax. You can't blame Winston this week. They will. Get Pick one six. of those stress balls. They will. Namaste. Namaste. Right. Uh, Bucks are improving every week. There will always be something wrong. But as long as adjustments are made and That's problems football. addressed, I'm content. That's Johnny uh. Dean, the professor. Good stuff, as always. Having that perspective that we expect from you here. I'm going to break it down like this. On the There's evolution. only one team to ever do everything perfect every game. Can you guess who that was? The Miami Dolphins, 16-0 and in a Super Bowl. Right, there you I go. I can't believe you even mentioned the Tanks. Oh, oh, well, that those guys shouldn't be affiliated with those guys. <laughs> you shut up. You're not even, you weren't even born back then in So 72. what? I still know what I know. I, I got you. Yeah, Alex, you, did you see Marpet today? Somebody calling you out, Johnny Dean. You talked about Ali Marpet kind of struggling, but you really – you really heard from the offensive line. That was a really good they day for this thing. offensive line, right? It was an excellent day from team the offensive effort. line. Yep. It was a team effort. They made Aaron Donald quite quiet. They only gave up two sacks. One of the sacks was because Winston Coverage. was out of the pocket to try to avoid a sack. The offensive line, they should get drinks for free by the quarterback and the skill thing. set tonight because they're the ones who made this yeah, happen. Yeah. Without the offensive line doing what they need to do, doesn't happen. Godwin doesn't go off for 172. Evans isn't able to do a skip to Malou, and Rojo doesn't have 82 total yards of offense. And 100 taken back. And you look at that <laughs> route with Mike Evans on that deep pass. You know, I don't know what Marcus Peters is looking at. Maybe he's looking for help, but basically Evans just runs right past him. Peters tried to do a veteran move. He thought he saw a curl coming. He was going to jump that route. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think me, you, and Alex said they're squatting on those routes. Double move is going to come. The double move came, Peter squat. I can actually do a flashback. I'm going to do that Thursday. Okay. That same play. And you know what game that happened in? Mike Thomas, same sideline. Yep. Ran a little stop and go and went right by Peters over the top of him for a touchdown. And he pulled out the Joe Horn cell phone. Same exact thing. If you look at ah. most of the tape, Tlaib was matched up on Evans for most of yep. the night. And when they did they have switched. Peters on Evans, they had a safety over the top. The one time that Tlaib was on Godwin and Peters was on Evans and there was no safety, you saw what happened. Well, I mean, a lot of people say, well, don't expect to score all those points all the time. Why not? Because you've got the weapons. I mean, I know it's not going to happen, but they got the weapons here, ladies and gentlemen. Like an for the they have Chris Godwin. The they to have Mike Evans. In the right. You have O.J. Howard. You have Cameron Bray. You have Ronald Jones. And you have Darre and Peyton Barber. So there's opportunities. But where it starts is, right, the offensive line. When the offensive line Plays is well. keeping Winston clean and giving him that necessary time, even uh, enough time to scale the pocket so he can scan the field for those other options, for those other progressions, I think you're good to go. Winston has an outside chance of throwing for 5,000 yards this year. Outside chance. 4,000? That, that's easy. That's, mm. well, Wipe I that said, away. That's look, easy. I said over 30 touchdowns, maybe 11 interceptions, and maybe just a little bit more than that. Well, the, at this point. Winston isn't top in the league right now in picks, by the way, either. Everybody, right. everybody sure. likes to bring that up every single game. Your buddy, your boy, I ain't going to say your boy, people's boys, Baker Mayfield ain't looking so hot with all these expectations. Well, that's Matt Colson. I, I don't hear people <laughs> talking about that with all these receivers and weapons, and he's looking like hot garbage right. coming out, living off Ty Gurley's rushing ability. Quarterbacks look a lot better when you have a rush, a running back that can rush for 150 yards a sure. game, hence Jared Goff, hence Super Bowl, yeah. hence Super Bowl loss. Hence today's Didn't loss. Chubb have a career day with 165 yards yes. rushing and yeah. about 18 yards off of three receptions? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Well, no, no. I, I mean, again, it just goes back to you, you can sit here and say all day long that this is a passing league, but once again, you have to have that running game to take the pressure. 68 Be passing attempts. It's too much. Way Jesus. too much. Uh, do any of you think the media will give the Bucks some respect? Nope, I don't or, want it. Oh, None. Oh, I don't want it. None. They say I'm, the Rams fail. Most I, likely. I, I don't – look – you know, we can sit here and talk about how other people cover this, or we can sit here and do what we do. That's why we do it. We'll every cover. night we'll here cover. on Bucks Report, it's the evolution of sports talk television. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Anthony, of course. Would you get that light out? He's you, looking for him. We got Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors on the sports web. 
Uh, nine and a half, I took the Bucks in my six-game parlay. First time right, Bucks Nation, road win, two and two, start Rojo. The offsides on Nassib was a pure BS call. Agree, yep. Johnny Dean? But True. you know why I missed it? Because the ref was running back and didn't have a chance to see it. But I there's mean, three referees on the field. Somebody should have saw it. Is that something that has to be reviewed at that point, do you That's think? Said, well, you have penalties reviewed. Why couldn't we review that? You don't want right. to waste a challenge on a review that should have been called minutes. your way. Well, no, but I'm minutes. saying should the NFL look more into that, especially if you're going to miss it because you're supposed to get the play right. And I get it, there's plays missed, but it's a blatant call that changes – it, it was the a first down. changes the game. It was a first down. Right. On a fourth. Right. It, it's not a good thing. It's not a good optic, and the NFL has to look at it. And I tell you right now, if I'm Roger Goodell or you're in charge of the refs at this point, that guy needs to be suspended because he missed that call. Dude he jumped. Need, he missed Played the call. He jumped. He missed it. Uh, Rojo should start, but watch Barber have the better day because the Saints defense will be watching for Rojo and forget about Barber. Barber uh, was having a good day uh, last year two in that first game, which also was 48-40. to 40. Uh, But, of course, today, Bucks win 55-40. I'm to open 40. to say I like to play into the Barber Rojo thing. I think yeah. It's fun because people go back and forth. I think these two are perfect for each other. Yeah. I'm just going to go on record and say that they're perfect for each other. They both have different skill sets. Yeah. I think Barber's a much better pass protector than Ronald Jones is. Man, he's been in the league a little longer. He's still – Needless to say, uh, Barber's still wet behind the ears. Yeah. Still fresh in this league. Um, but I think they're perfect for each other. I think they play off of each other. They do. And, and, and they have to switch up. And I think Alex said earlier, he said, look at the confidence of Ronald Jones on that fake. I think it was a fake 28-28 uh, outside zone. And um, and he, Winston pulled it, and then he gave it, and then he ended up dumping it right back to him. Right. It was the confidence of knowing where you were supposed to be. It was the confidence that Jameis Winston had in his offense, knowing Ronald Jones was going to be where he's supposed he to be. He looks like a different quarterback. And, Would we all say that at this and point? Him and Ronald Jones. Right. Both. They look like different players. And, again, that goes back to what, ladies and gentlemen? Coaching. 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 Be coaching for 300? Uh, that, that, that's uh-huh. the reason why you get a coach like Bruce Arians. He's a proven commodity. You get a coach like Todd Bowles. And everybody else that's a part of this staff, people make fun of it. There's a lot of coaches, there's a lot of teaching, and there's a lot of development going on with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's go ahead, read some more comments, and then once again, we will get you guys out of here and definitely get on the road with the reaction show. Lots of comments, so I want to make sure we read them, and then we'll get your comments here. Uh, we should be 4-0, at least 3-1 and totally. Sorry. Alex is writing down names of Jameis haters so he can go trolling later. I like it. I don't troll. Uh, I just bring facts. James Ponton has tuned in. Screw the Cowboys. We should be 3-1, but a great win. Screw the Saints. Screw them all <laughs> if they ain't the Bucks. Uh, now you're comparing Nassim to Quan. Division games still are scary. Agree with that. It will be a tough matchup. Even without Drew Brees, you have Teddy Bridgewater, you have Alvin Kamara, and Michael Thomas. Uh, you also have Cameron. Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Todd Gurley, Alvin Kamara. In a row. How have they done? Back to back. Uh, shut down Christian McCaffrey, put the woodshed on Saquon Barkley, and Gurley had a couple of touchdowns, but Todd Gurley was not Todd Gurley. Yeah, I mean, and that's the difference. I mean, look, again, oh. if you make a team one-dimensional, I definitely believe you can win. I really do. Uh, Andrew is tuned in. Uh, let's see here. The Saints ain't the same no more. Even if they had Breeze, Bucks still win 38-21. Yes, secondary needs to fix their mistakes. Hey, since people said the NFL screwed the Bucks with the scheduling, can they make it up to us by scheduling the rest of our games on the road the rest of the season? 2-0 and on the road and 0-2 at home. Bucks won't get no credit for this. When every sports show uh, will say it's more bad Rams than good Bucks, I promise, shaking my head. Jaguars 26-24 win uh, with uh, Leonard Fournette going over 200 rushing yards. Bucks scored the third most points in the NFL. 385, four touchdowns, interception, great game. Really two good games by Jameis. Uh, Fournette ran for 225. Number of points scored by the Bucs. Uh, Honor Derek, 55. Good stuff. Uh, and you know that old commercial, and I said it when we played that message for Buckaholics. Who's my favorite player? Mr. Derek Brooks. That's Derek, an old commercial. Derek. You, you guys know that. Frank Gore set a record today. It's like a 90s Fourth all flashback. Time. Oh, he's like 185 years old. Guy needs to be checked <laughs> for HGH. Your body. He just continues to get it done for the Buffalo 15th Bills. 15th year in the NFL. Amazing. Take Amazing. care of your body. And when, look, when they say that running backs are done at 30, look at Frank Gore. He's look at Adrian anomaly. Peterson. You AJ also Peterson. have Adrian Peterson. So, uh, Marcellus Wiley, Max Kellerman, disrespect Jameis on the regular. 
They can don't both care. I don't want it. their sympathy. Bucks 45-21, Saints next week, Corey Brown. Uh, Jameis uh, gave him the chance to win. He also gave us a chance to lose. That's what Brandon says. Okay, stars of the game, Jameis, Shaq, Godwin, and Vea Sue. I think we pay Winston and Barrett and trade away picks to acquire a top-notch corner. A lot of people saying Jalen Ramsey. If he didn't cost two first-round no picks. picks. I'm not giving up picks. You know, uh, he uh, was in Denver, but he didn't play. Back injury, flu. He's already traded, man. He's already traded. That deal just waiting for the final. Who makes that trade, do you think? I keep on well, asking. Yeah, everyone. we might as well tap, pick that now because it's coming in these next couple days. Let's yeah. all make well, a guess. Yeah, Let's all well. just pick it's a team. Fun. After you. Yo, damn, I got to go first. Huh. If What's I had to pick <laughs> somebody that really needs corners, I want to say Dallas. I want to say Dallas. They're in win now mode. But if I had to. If, if I was Jacksonville, I definitely don't want to trade him to somewhere where I got to play him again. Sure. So I would try to send him to the NFC. So if I had to send him somewhere. Seattle? Seattle's that's Ramsey's definitely a player Seattle would use. Yep. Definitely. Clowney had an interception return for a touchdown but they today. they don't have picks, I yep. believe, because they use it to, to obtain. Uh, they don't have picks. Right. So you would have to give up players that they don't have. So I would have to say, I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking maybe Redskins. I'm Reds? Reds? No, yeah. no, I don't think the Redskins. Not at no. all. That, so? that team no. is in total disarray. There's no way that Ramsey will agree well, they're to gonna that suck, trade. No and way. And you're going to get a high pick. It's no not way. about where Ramsey wants to go. If oh, I had Ramsey to... has control in this. Don't don't make make no mistake about it. What and I'll tell you what, the Ravens, to Ravens? me, seem you to You took make my sense. pick. I was absolutely going to say that. The well, Baltimore hey, Ravens is built for win now. Like Alex. I mean, welcome Welcome to the party, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> the Baltimore Ravens can use him in multiple scheme sets. They could have used him if A.B. was still playing for New England. But on three wide receiver sets with Humphrey, with uh, Ball Hawk, Mr. Thomas, and with Jalen Ramsey, that defense will be much better. Plus, Ramsey is a tackler. The only weakness for the Baltimore Ravens is their linebacking core because their front four and their back three is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Uh, they won't stop until they make the playoffs. So Jameis doesn't have double-digit interceptions. I nope, think he's uh, not leading the league in let's picks. Let's see. Give uh, Mayfield's up there though. Uh, he give the D back credit. He made a hell of a play. Hey guys. Uh, Matt says uh, Carly Lloyd is getting pressed because she actually could kick in the NFL. I don't know that. She kicks you know, way too far back. If you really it, watch that? She did it one time in practice, and everybody assumed she can. Look, I'm all about opportunity, but I don't know if she can kick in the NFL in pressure situations. I have no idea of that. No comment. Come on, Matt. Uh, stay tuned right here for the reaction show as uh, you download the Live app. We'll send you out the link. We'll get you on camera. Uh, hey, it's uh, Martin Gramatica. Awesome. Good stuff. Jeremiah's watching our first drunk. Uh, that was not Martin Gramatica, Ben. You're trolling again. New young team, new system, new coaching staff. Honestly, I'm impressed. They're uh, gelling as quickly and learning this new system as fast and efficiently as they are. Bucks are the new power. I've been wondering when he would show up again. Would you shut up? Uh, they're talking about the guy who got on before, Martin Gramatica. That was not Martin Gramatica, jerks. You had it. it was, uh, boss, I'm here. Would you shut up and stop trying to talk to them about that nonsense? We say three things on the sports web. Bring your passion. Bring your excitement. Just don't bring any veggies. Don't bring any nonsense, jackass. All right, uh, let's <laughs> see here. Air, Boss, I'm here again. I did. Uh, everybody <laughs> wanted to slam the Bucks for the game. Nope. Yep. This is the Bucks. I knew we were uh, have supported Winston since day one. I believe in all his will that he is a great quarterback. Thanks, Ben. Atlanta Falcons are so overrated. Offense capitalized on all turnovers. This is complimentary football. Good stuff, Jeff. Uh, the Bucks kicked. The stuff out of the Rams. The Saints and the Panthers both lost to the Rams. Good stuff. We've done a lot right, and there's still room for improvement. But look at the last three games, only two turnovers. That's great. We have played hard. I wasn't mad about last week's game. We played excellent. We've been winning on offense, and that's what we need. Winston has been playing how we've seen him playing. I know as long as the Bucks keep playing the way we, we they are, uh, we're going to have a great season ahead of us. Blake's class now is in session. What's going on, <laughs> Anthony? And, uh, Alex, you're watching with us? Good stuff. Alex, uh, actually, guys, I'm impressed with the whole team. I'm happy we're in the win column and would love to see this week Jameis be who Jameis really is. Uh, it would be great to finally be contenders. Good stuff, Matt. I like it. Big win. John says no problem with Evans. A victory dance was due, and Mike showed off. Is the O-line proven? Rams are a vicious defensive line. I would say all the questions 
And look, it's early, but a lot of those questions about the offensive line, they did a good job today. And once again, I go back to coaching. And I yep. go back to the fact that Caleb Beninock is not your right guard anymore. So that improved your is it New your, your situation already. Alex Kappa has definitely improved. Um, the, how's Dirk Cutter doing in Atlanta? Aren't they one and three? Well, there's he's, three he's, passes today, no it, running game. It's funny you still go to you do the same thing you did when you was in the Tampa and you go to Atlanta. You have a great running back this time and uh, Devontae Freeman. You don't run it. I wouldn't put great and Devontae Freeman in the same sentence. Well, look, I think look, well, I, I think Devontae Freeman had better years. is okay, unproven. I think he's unproven. I think he definitely has some type of injury history. Yeah, but he's so being too. underutilized in that. That's Falcons what I'm trying offense. to get at. Right, and, and you're not throwing the ball to right. him like you did here in Tampa. You don't throw to the back, the backs. You have a lackluster offensive line. I think you have either three or four offensive linemen out, but you still are demanding five to seven step drops. Three, thank you, Alex. Five to seven step drops knowing you can't have the time to throw them. Yeah. So now your quarterback's rushing throws that are not timed up with your wide receivers, and Matt Ryan is throwing arid throws. So it kind of looks the same here. So when you people say that coaching don't make a difference, coaching does make a difference. Here's yeah. what I don't understand. Matt Ryan had 397 yards passing. Yay. Last year's <laughs> last, week, <laughs> last week, Saxonville had nine, nine sacks on Marcus Mariota. You know how many sacks that the Atlanta Falcons had on Mariota today? One. Would that be slime? There you go. There yeah. you go. And that's what it's all about. It starts up front offensively and def defensively. And what you're watching right now is the evolution of sports talk television as I get tongue-tied here live at Ferg's 1320 Central Avenue and St. Pete. I'm your host, Peter Blake, along with Mr. Blake Anthony, Alex Fleming, Fantasy and Flavors. We'll take some more questions and then we'll get off. In fact, I'll tell you what, I, I want to read all your questions, but you have a lot tonight. So we'll definitely get those. We'll, I'll come back. Give me a break. About 10, 15 minutes, we'll come back with your reaction show. Remember, download the Be Live app. We'll send you out the link. We'll get you on face-to-face. -face. There's no other Bucks platform that's doing this. We're doing it right, and we're giving you fans a voice. Let's do it good tonight here on the sports web. Blake Anthony, your final thoughts. See you guys tomorrow at 3 p.m. I'm going to go over, go over to pre, uh, post game stuff and take a look at tape and uh, go Bucks. Great win. Alex Fleming. You mind if I get a minute? Sure, go ahead. I believe on Thursday I gave you some waiver wire pickups to pick up. Wayne Gallman was one of those people. Guess what? He had two touchdowns today, worth 27 points in fantasy. I mentioned Geronimo Allison was the wide receiver that you want in Green Bay if you didn't have Devontae Adams. Well, guess what? He had a touchdown against Philadelphia, so we hit on that. I mentioned about A.J. Brown because he was averaging 20 yards a catch before the previous game. Guess what? He went off. Three catches, 94 yards, two touchdowns. I mentioned Daniel Jones. He had two picks today, but he got the ship in New York turned around. And my last waiver wire pickup was Ronald Jones. 82 total yards, touchdown. It pays when you do your homework. It does pay to do your homework, and he will be live with us on the sports web on Wednesday night. For Blake Anthony of Blake and Blake Sports and Buck and Blake Sports, for Alex Fleming of Fantasy and Flavors and also newest Bucks report writer, I'm your host, Peter Blake. Bucks win to go to 2-2 two and two over the L.A. Rams, 55-40. to 40. Would you stop with that? A franchise record in their history. We'll be back with your reaction show because I'm Peter Blake, giving you something to think about. We'll see you later. Will you shut up? In the sports web a sports talk show for the hardcore fan bring your passion bring your excitement just don't bring any nonsense
At Life's a Beach Realty, we're all about life on the beach. Stunning Panama City Beach and one of the most beautiful properties on the Gulf Coast, Shores of Panama. Radiant, elegant, and spectacular. Steps away from white sugar sand. Every room overlooks the turquoise of the Gulf of Mexico. Come in for your tour today. Life's a Beach Realty is your gateway to Shores of Panama. The Shores and a whole lot more. 